गुड मॉर्निंग ऑल वेलकम टू द लास्ट सेशन ऑफ आईसीआर मंथ 2021 सेलिब्रेशंस वी आर हैविंग थ्री स्पीकर्स फॉर टुडे डॉक्टर चिराग शाह डॉक्टर नीलेश कारिया एंड डॉक्टर निकुंज जानी विद देयर प्रेजेंटेशंस वंस अगेन आई वेलकम एवरीवन एंड वी विल स्टार्ट द सेशन विद द इंस्टीट्यूशनल प्रेयर्स आई विल रिक्वेस्ट सुजाता मैडम टू काइंडली डू द नीड फॉर हमको मन की शक्ति देना मन विजय करे दूसरों के जैसे पहले खुद को जय करे हमको मन की शक्ति देना भेद भाव अपने दिल से साफ कर सके दोस्तों से भूल हो तो माफ कर सके झूठ से बचे रहे सच का दम भरे खुद को जय करे हमको मन की शक्ति देना मुश्किलें पड़े तो हम पे इतना कर मकर साथ दे जो धर मका चले तो धर मकर खुद पे हौसला बदीत नारे दूसरों के जैसे पहले खुद को जय करे हमको मन की शक्ति देना मन विजय करे खुद को जय करे हमको मन की शक्ति देना थैंक यू सुरेदा मैडम आई विल नाउ रिक्वेस्ट बिपिन सर टू काइंडली इंट्रोड्यूस द प्रोग्राम Doctor Hello. Nadesh, I request you to kindly turn off your video. Hello. Yeah, Bipin. Yeah, what, what, what will be the the the, the sequence the, of uh, uh, speakers will be uh, it, the opening speaker will be Doctor Chirag, followed by Doctor Nilesh, followed by Doctor Nikun. We are starting with Chirag, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I request Bipin sir to kindly turn on his camera. ओके ओके या सो गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीवन आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू यट अनदर एपिसोड ऑफ अवर आईसीआर मंथ एंड दिस इज गोइंग टू बी द पेनल्टी मेड फॉर दिस इयर वी हैड अ वेरीड एक्सपीरियंस शेयर्ड बाय ऑल अवर एल्यूमनाय एंड अवर एसोसिएट्स एंड इट वाज अ रियल नॉलेज full uh, uh, month and uh, probably maybe people may be missing their sunday outing but uh, after some time we will miss our sunday learning also uh, the lot of hard work put by all the speakers and uh, the way they have prepared themselves is uh, is is there to see for everyone so today morning the first speaker is dr chirag shah he is associated with uh, icr uh, since a long time i think more than 20 25 years and he entered as a regular uh, training uh, student in baroda and then he come came to mumbai he stayed at palghar and developed his clinical skills as well as ipd skills and then he is uh, the professor of physiology in our mks uh, college at uh, sumeru and he is the pioneer who has built that department 
and uh, he was one of the uh, participant <coughs> in uh, initiating the integrated teaching in undergraduate at our uh, Malini Kishor Sangvi Homeopathic Medical College. He has got a vast experience of uh, integrating uh, the physiology and pathophysiology in uh, practice, in teaching. And he is going to demonstrate today that how knowledge of physiology is central mm -hmm. for an homeopath uh, to not only understand the state and stage of disease, but to comprehend the state and stage of susceptibility and uh, to integrate that knowledge in understanding materia medica yeah. as well as remedy regulations. So uh, in short, I mean, uh, without the knowledge of pathophysiology, I mean, we, uh, it, is, it is very difficult to practice homeopathy. I mean, we can prescribe on symptoms and be happy, but that cannot be the ideal way of doing it because we are in a scientific world where the evidence-based uh, practice is what going to establish us, ourselves into the world of uh, science. So this is an attempt by him. He manages the pulmonary OPD there. So he will take us to the journey of how pathophysiology and primarily the knowledge of physiology, which is central to even comprehend organon what uh, uh, Dr. Hanuman has written two, uh, 200 years back. So I request Dr. Chirak to now take over and uh, take us a journey and give us an insight that how the pathophysiology knowledge helped him to comprehend all the serious uh, and difficult cases and uh, how it has helped him to resolve all those cases with success. Uh, yeah, yes, Dr. Chirag, uh, please uh, turn on your video and uh, start the presentation. Welcome, Dr. Chirag. Good morning, all. Thank you, Vipin sir, for uh, giving me the chance to present my learning of the pathophysiology in the management of the respiratory disorder. See, this basic concept uh, came uh, in my mind as a physiology teacher that when I sit into the clinic and I see the cases and how I looked it into the different uh, kind of the depth of the pathology and how, I, how I'm correlating with the materia medica. So it is a very simple attempt to represent that in this uh, ICR month celebration. The journey, uh, the basic objective of this presentation is to understand the knowledge of a functional alteration in assessment of a state and the stage of the disease. To explore the importance of investigation and examination findings in understanding the underlying pathophysiology and hence the state and stage of the disease. To understand how the knowledge of a pathophysiology helps into the assessing and the managing the susceptibility. To understand the knowledge of a physiology and the pathophysiology in the selection and the differentiation of the materia medica images. And to understand how the knowledge of the pathophysiology helps into the selection of the posology and the remedy reaction. Let us uh, understand uh, this whole uh, objectives with the presentation of the case. This is a, a first case in my uh, early years of a training into the Sumeru as a uh, IPD uh, person. That was a, a recently into the 2008 when I took the training from the Palgar under the so many uh, people. This first case of the 70 years old female uh, which came and uh, it was an opportunity for me that uh, there are a certain learners uh, were there under me. So I allowed learner to take the, this case and the learner has took this uh, the, uh, complaint into the LSMC form. There was a cough, bloody expectoration with the breathlessness and all this complaint has been uh, started since three to four days. As the patient had a history of uh, uh, smoking BD and she has stopped since last uh, uh, since the complaint has been started. The characteristic modalities were available that that is uh, amelioration by lying on the right side, aggravation night. The on examination which has been done by the learner that was uh, RR was a forty. The on the respiratory 
uh, sound that is a bilateral ronchi which has been available. Rest are a uh, normal. When this case came where there is a, you know, the RR was a 40, then suddenly it has started to what would be the clinical diagnosis? And what action do I need to take? There was a lots of confusion because what the representation of the symptoms and what the on-examination findings, there is a little bit gap which I am able to see. What to do, what I am treating. And this is the right way to see the case. Hence, uh, I have to enter into the case and again uh, re-inquire the whole case. After the re-inquiry, the complaint was, uh, this complaint has been started since 10 to 15 days, but uh, it has been increased since three, four days. There is a uh, orthopnea with uh, the characteristic modalities of uh, aggravation by lying on the right side and aggravation night with the concomitant thirst increase, a small quantity frequently. And there is a weakness of plus three. The on-examination finding, which has been able to see that the pulse was uh, 140. That is a tachycardia, which has been available. With that, there is a tachypnea also has been seen. And the sinosis on a tongue, which has been able to see. There is a bilateral craps, which has been available and the chest expansion minimal. Now, when I'm looking into the, all these things, there was a continuously thinking process that the, what I'm handling. As the patient has been brought into the wheelchair and the highly restless with the discomfort, mouth breathing was going on. Then as a simple, we have a, you know, a primary care. So uh, should I accept this case or not? What is the clinical diagnosis? And what am I handling? There's so many confusions and the questions which has been coming into my mind. Then I started uh, putting my knowledge of the physiology that all this uh, form which has been available in that what is the state and the stage of the disease? We are able to see that there is a, definitely a, a, a increased uh, accumulation of the mucus which has been there because of that there is obstruction and the O2CO2 exchange which has been uh, deteriorated. In the sinosis which has been available, that means there is a function of the oxyhemoglobin is also uh, reduced. And there is an increased pulmonary congestion. So uh, looking into the clinical condition, the case is going towards uh, exudative and the proliferative, uh, exudative to the proliferative phase. Now, by looking into the book, this travel took almost a more, uh, you know, uh, seven to eight days in going into this. But this is happening into the within a two to three days. So in acute state, the pace is a fast. There is a structural irreversible changes which has been seen. And by looking into the symptomatology that uh, SPO2 was a 70 and all that, this case is uh, going towards a respiratory failure. So the structure form function has been made and the, the clinical understanding has been immersed as this case is uh, with the fast pace going into the acute respiratory distress syndrome. So that was a very alarming sign that now what to do? What will be my action? Am I able to handle this case? How to manage this case? And suddenly my training into the father as a IPD management, uh, you know, that has been came in my mind. So we made the IPD admission and we thought that with the IPD admission and continuous monitoring, we will take, we will monitor the, this case. The totality has been made. The thirst increase for the small quantity with the frequent repetition, the weakness, the aggravation night, and the lying on the right side was a key of this case as there is a two physical concomitant which has been available and the characteristic modalities which has been seen. We have start repetition, and these are the certain medicine which has been coming up. That is a phosphorus, antrim tart, pulsatilla, sulfur. But by looking into the pace of the disease, there is a two remedies which has been coming up into the mind. One is antrim ars and the antrim tart. The antrim ars 
basically the whole picture of the antim ars has been a matching with the antim tart but the characteristic uh, weakness with the first increase with the frequent uh, need which has been differentiating from the antim tart where the antim tart having a excessive secretion which has been uh, not able to uh, find into this patient the action was antim ars 30 four hourly was started on a 10 9 uh, we have started with the 3 liter of the oxygen and the three pills four hourly started within a 24 hours the breathlessness was a uh, better the cough was a uh, mildly better but there is no hemoptysis the most important striking feature was that the generals were improved that the thirst as well as the weakness and the respiratory rate has been a uh, limited uh, to 30 simultaneously the craps was there the most characteristic uh, thing which has been uh, seen that the chest expansion which has been improved that means the recall capacity of the alveoli is also has been improved and with the oxygen the spo2 has been maintained a 92 as the generals were improved we have uh, you know again started uh, continued with the same medicine that is uh, antimars 33 pills four hourly after another 24 hours the the orthopnea which has been uh, there that was a uh, completely better the patient was a uh, better by and the cough has been improved the weakness has been improved a lot and we have made the oxygen from the 3 liter to the 1 liter and with that the spo2 has been maintained a uh, 97% and the respiratory rate was a uh, which was earlier a uh, 44 now has been reduced to the 28 but still looking into the complaint what the patient has been came we have continued with the anti mars uh, 200 triples four hourly after uh, another 24 hours we have stopped the oxygen the complaint was absolutely better and with the no oxygen the spo2 has been maintained at 98 the respiratory rate has been come down to the nearly a normal that is a 24 and uh, on the on examination there is a occasional craps which has been seen and the chest expansion has been also uh, improved we have did the we have given the anti mars 200 triple tds and uh, we have continued with the uh, case definition later on the patient has uh, remained with us for a long time and there was no absolutely any single episode of this type later on see by looking into this case when i understood the whole uh, pathophysiology of uh, this case that uh, the case which has been going towards a respiratory failure where there is a increase uh, pulmonary congestion there is secretion of the uh, mucus and which leads to obstruction there was a need because of the o2 co2 transport uh, transport which has been affected the spo2 has been maintained at 70 as the management of the ipd care with the medicinal management is required by looking into the old age structural irreversible changes the and the characteristic concomitants were available the susceptibility was the low to moderate and when i uh, did the materia medica differentiation the antim ars has been a uh, given in the many experiences into the books which has been suggested that there is uh, after the emphysema there is a uh, excessive secretion has been seen with that there is a, a increase exudative process is also available and the two characteristic concomitant which has been seen so with this antimas what are the functional level improvement has been occurred that is the uh, capacity of the bronchioles has been improved so that the oxygenation has been improved the o2 concentration is also uh, improved so the o2 co2 exchange has been a uh, uh, maintained <coughs> the oxyhemoglobin which was been seen earlier that has been within uh, you know as the o2 therapy has been given it has been gone and later on when the o2 has been stopped then also it has been gone the pulmonary congestion has been reduced and the there is a oxygen level has been maintained from the 70 to 98 the my learning from this case was the 
importance of the examination, what the examination has been suggesting, and how the, we are able to understand that the, what are the functional disturbance which has been taking a place, and what depth of that pathology, and the state and the stage of the disease which has been seen. Again, this case has been uh, given me a learning that how the use of the IPD facility into the case management and which really uh, reduces our anxiety by regularly monitoring the patient. The another case, it is a case uh, from my private practice that there is a three years old male child, which has been visiting me a first time. And uh, the, when the patient came with the parent, the parent was saying that since six months, this whole complaint of the uh, cold, cough, running nose, discharge, which is in, uh, going off and on. And uh, since six months, they are continuously taking their treatment off from the pediatrician, but there is a no improvement. It has been continuously going on. But since last three to four days, the fever, which has been coming up, which has been ranging with the 101 to the 103, and the discharge was a yellowish green, the cough has been uh, there. When the patient cough, there is a rattling which has been available. And uh, as the pediatrician has been told them, they used to give the nebulization and the things were settled. The characteristic modality which has been seen, that is uh, aggravation 3 a.m., aggravation night, change of weather, and the concomitant is a thirst decrease and appetite decrease. Now, as soon as uh, the on-examination finding has been done, the temperature was uh, 101. The pulse was 120 and RR was 28. And on examination, which has been seen that there is a Krebs, which has been uh, seen with that, there is a bronchial breathing has been uh, available. So uh, the action was taken that there is a, we need to give a lab investigation. And the lab investigation has that given that the uh, CBC, the ESR was a 53, the WBC was a uh, high. So that is even the uh, neutrophil is a 76. So it seems to be it is a bacterial infection which has been uh, going on. And the chest x-ray was suggesting of the patchy consolidation. And that speaks about the pneumonia. Now understanding this case through the uh, functional alteration that there was a uh, cause of the, this uh, protect, uh, you know, mucus uh, collection and obstruction, there is a disturbance into the gaseous exchange. With that, the patient having the breathlessness, so there is a problem at the level of a, a ventilation also. And the WBC, which has been uh, increased, so that is a more uh, phagocytic activity, which has been going on. Now, looking into the whole episode, this episode, which has been coming on off and on, and now since uh, four days, the congestion in a pneumonia going into the superlative state. So the pace, the travel, which has been seems, which has been a very gradual. But looking into the WBC, which has been an increase, now this is going towards the septic, sepsis. Hence, uh, the understanding of the state and the stage of the disease has been mentioned. And it has been seen that this is a case of a pneumonia where there is a pace is a gradual, but we need to take care of the, uh, the whatever the inflammatory changes which has been taking a place into the peribronchial parenchyma. So the totality was made that is a pace is a gradual, the pathology is a acute inflammation, congestion, the discharge is a yellowish screen, the characteristic modality is a aggravation, 3 a.m. aggravation to lying down straight, which has been uh, talking about the time dimension, pathological generals, characteristic modalities. After this, the repertorization has been done. And there are uh, three, four remedies came into the picture that is uh, anti mass, arsenic, kalika, rustox. By looking into the, the totality, the two medicines were uh, selected. First is a Kalikab and the second is anti -mitar. But as seen, we have seen into the Kalikab that there is a pace is a gradual. The aggravation is a 2 to 4 a.m. 
and the specific that is a 3n and the yellowish green discharge has been seen but into the anti tart the pace in the earlier case we have seen that the pace is a very rapid and there is extreme drowsiness with that with the thirst increase and the extreme weakness which we are not able to see in this case on that basis the kalicarb 200 three pills four hourly was a uh, selected so we have started this on the 17318 after the two days the fever was a uh, absolutely better so there is a a febrile condition the cough has also improved a uh, 80% and uh, the there is a no breathlessness which was felt the respiratory rate has been uh, came to a nearly normal or normal that is a 17 per minute which was earlier a uh, 25 and occasional creps which has been given so the uh, the repetition has been a step down that is kalika wanted qds after uh, another 3 days there is uh, everything was a better the repeat uh, cbc has been carried out and the wbc was a uh, 7590 so into the no normal state even esr also has been reduced a lot and the kalika 200 td has been given and the case has been defined and finally the cr the calcarea pos which has been given and later on after that the whole case has been uh, managed with the calcarea pos and there is no single episode of the this uh, uh, pneumonia or the acute cough has been a key now this case has been a uh, talked about how the kalicarb has been helped into the functional level of restoration that the if you see the earlier case and if you see compare with this case even the you know the medicine which has been uh, taking care of the recovering period also uh, changes the kalika which has been having a gradual pace aggravation 3 am and the yellow general discharge and looking into the characteristic concomitant reversibility the potency has been selected the model that is at 200 and at a functional level this kalika has been helped into the reduce the obstruction in decrease the pulmonary congestion and uh, decrease the infective condition and the wbc has been a uh, maintained at normal level so conclusion of this case as far as the learning is concerned that the this case has allowed me to travel of the pathophysiology for appreciating the susceptibility because in a earlier case we have continuously repeated a four hourly for a long time but in this case as soon as the things are percent is better we have stepped down the potency even it is also uh, allowed me this a uh, state a uh, stage of the pathology to correlation with the materia medica images and how this uh, investigation and the examination finding allowed me to understand what are the functional or uh, deterioration which has been uh, taken place now this is a third case this is also came into uh, my opd and this case a uh, the 15 year old male patient he is a grandson of a male and a very precious child because he born after the 17 years of the marriage at the age of mother is 37 and the father is 39 but he the precious child brought a certain a gift that is a not actually gift but a, this is a serious condition that he a, born with the chd with the asd and vsd and because of this a heart complaint there is a constant cold and cough which has been a uh, seen into this child the relative reported to the cardiac surgeons advice for treat, treatment of the cold and uh, this heart problem but the cardiac surgeon has been advised that if the cold and cough has been not treated properly the you know the surgery cannot be performed the lsmc has been a uh, maid because uh, to be very frank uh, when the maid came to us it was a not a choice because there was a continuously a uh, you know uh, things that we have to treat this case 
the complaint was made uh, asked uh, asked and it has been put it on the lsmc that the there is a running nose yellowish thick discharge cough rattling and there is a difficulty in breathing and the characteristic modalities which has been seen that is a aggravation night and aggravation 3m to 4m but there is a no concomitant which has been uh, deteriorated except the uh, thirst uh, appetite which has been decreased now this is a uh, going on since birth and uh, now it has been since two days the on examination which has been seen that is a temperature was of 101 the respiratory rate was 50 and the weight should be at this age is uh, almost around the 9 to 10 kg is uh, at a 6 kg on examination, there is a bilateral crabs has been seen, and because of the heart complaint, the liver was a one finger palpable and the systolic murmur was a seen. The investigation which has been made, the WBC is a slightly increased, that is 11,100. But the chest X was a suggestive of a right pneumonitis with huge cardiomegaly. And the echo was talking about the severe septal regurgitation and the EF was a 45%. So the thing which has been came in mind, should I accept this case? What I need to do? The case which has been coming up from the maid, that they were a very poor, so there is a, uh, they, you know, they were went to the certain uh, Makar Yojana into a certain private clinic, but still this report has been came that the, this, uh, if the cold and cough treatment has been not mentioned, the heart surgery will not be done. Not will be done. By looking into the totality, the aggravation night, aggravation 3, 4 a.m., the Kalika 34 hourly has been given. We are able to see that the cardiomegaly has been seen, the pneumonia patch which has been uh, seen. But after 24 hours, with the Kalika, there was no change. Even the temperature has been increased. That means a certain uh, infective phenomenon is still going on. And the uh, Krebs is also, been also seen. So this was a very alarming uh, sign that the, with the four hourly, almost six rows, the Kalika uh, has been not held. I think in my uh, Palgar's training, it has been always seen that the, you know, uh, within a three, four days at least, you will have a certain a sign to see uh, that the, your medicine is a helping or not. But this is an OPD base, so it would be difficult to uh, regularly check that. Now, if I understand this uh, case, as there is an ASD and a VSD, there is a continuously uh, mixing up of the gases which has been happening and which leads to a hyperventilation. It also uh, decreases the pulmonary vascular resistance, which increases the hypoxia. And because of that, there is a breathlessness which has been uh, seen. Simultaneously, there is a pulmonary congestion as a functional level which has been seen. And then later on, there is a mucus uh, secretion and uh, there is an increased respiratory rate has been seen. Now, again, in this case, understanding the acute state, it has been traveling from the congestion to the superative state within a 48 hours. So that is a pace is a fast. And uh, the, there is a structural reversible changes has been seen. And as the WBC has started increasing, it's going towards a sepsis. It has been made uh, the structure form function and understand that how this uh, ASD, VSD, the cardiomegaly, which has been a continuously decreasing the pulmonary vasculature and how it has been uh, created the back pressure and the hypertension hypoxia which has been increased. It is also talks about the pulmonary pressure which has been increased and that leads to the pulmonary congestion. Again, the diagnosis which has been made and it has been came with the asynotic heart disease, with the cardiomegaly, with the right pericardiac pneumonitis in the CCF. Now, the main part is the management. It was very clear that uh, we have to intervene for the respiratory complaint only. But the CVS and RS is associated with each other in this case. 
Hence, it is a more important to see that how the compensatory mechanism is playing a role and how the susceptibility is throwing the forms. So we need to understand that the, how the CVS is continuously affecting on the RS. You cannot uh, segregate this phenomenon, which, has, uh, which I have missed into the earlier prescription you know, when the Kalikab has been given. So that was a more focus on how the fast the patient has recovered for his complaint of the RS. And hence the totality has been made that there is a pace is a fast, the affection of a heart with the lungs, the congestive pathology, the discharge is a yellow and the cough is a aggravation three to four a.m. While putting these things, there is a two drugs which has been coming into the mind. One is a ammonium carb and the kali carb. If you check the ammonium carb, the ammonium carb is not very well represented into the, you know, the repertory as far as all this thing is concerned. But if you go back to the Boger, Boger has been clear cut uh, given the picture of the ammonium carb as far as the heart and the lungs correlation. So onset was the rapid, there is a rap respiratory pathology because of the heart. Aggravation 3M and the Kalika, that onset is a gradual aggravation 3M and the greenish discharge which has been seen. The ammonium carb, looking into the case, 33 plus 4 hourly was selected and started. It has started on the next uh, same day. With the ammonium carb, four hourly, the fever was managed very well. The patient was a febrile within a, uh, two days. And there was an occasional ret uh, rattling. The respiratory rate is also a reduced white. And that ammonium carb 34 hourly has been a continue. On a 9-5, the cuff has been zero. Everything has been a better. But the most important thing is the weight has been improved 1 kg within a 10 days of a treatment. And the RS was a clear. But still, uh, the, as the heart has been not uh, taken care of, the ammonium carb 30 TD has been continued. In between the two weeks, the patient was absent because they felt it is very bad, uh, better. But again, they came that the, what we have to do now. And that time, the, all the complaints were better. The weight has been drastically improved from the 7 kg to 9.4 kg. And uh, the, still the liver was uh, one finger palpable and it took its own time to resolve. The patient has been, ammonium carb 30 has been given and the patient has been referred to the higher center for the cardiac evaluation and the surgery was successfully done. The later on, uh, the chest extra has been seen that there is a uh, lungs fields are clear and there is a no uh, any uh, pathology at the lungs, but the, the cardiomegaly has been there, which has been, uh, it will take its own time. What I have understood into this case that there is, a, because of the CVS pathology, there is a continuously a back pressure which has been seen and which leads to a pulmonary congestion, obstruction and a decrease into the elastic and the recoil capacity of the alveoli. So this ammonium carb has helped me at that level at the understanding the pathophysiology and giving the resolution in this case. The my learning, understand what is to treat in the disease and how to, by understanding the functional disturbance. Appreciating the depth of the pathology with the time dimension, importance of the appreciating the stage and the state of the pathology with the associated conditions. And uh, by looking into the pathophysiology, how we uh, understand this susceptibility and uh, as the time given the reputation and the potency selection. Though, now, if, we, uh, if I consider all these three cases and what is the important learning which I have achieved, that how my uh, knowledge of a functional alteration is helping me in the state and the stage of the disease. How to appreciate the depth of the pathology and the altered function by uh, investigation and the clinical findings. Because in each case, every case, the investigation and the on examination is very important to understand the functional uh, deterioration. And this also helps me to understand the susceptibility 
by looking into this pathophysiology and the state and the stage of the disease. And with this, it also helped me to selection of the Materia Medica images. Thanks to my teachers, as it has been said that the right learning from the life is easy for the person who is able to review himself dispassionately. Has the analytic discrimination valuable and who has an iron will to drive him till right learning others. Thank you, my teachers, Vipin sir, Kumar sir, Keyur, Puroit sir, all who have helped me to and motivate to understand this uh, phenomenon of the cases. And thanks my institutes. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Chirak, for the wonderful presentation. Uh, Bipin sir, we have two questions on YouTube. Do we want to take them now or at the yeah, end? Yeah, yeah, now, 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 because the theme is different. So we can take it now. Uh, you start my video, Keur. Huh, sorry. I will uh, request Chirak sir to kindly stop sharing his presentation. Yeah. Yeah. So, but. Uh, Chirak sir has uh, ably demonstrated that how physiology is a central to understand all the facets of homeopathic practice, starting from case definition to final resolution and ancillary treatment. And uh, it is a backbone for an homeopath to understand a lot of uh, different uh, uh, diseases and their management based on evidence and scientific approach. So thank you, Dr. Chirag, for all the efforts which you have put in. And all the three cases were uh, different and they demonstrated uh, uh, the utility of uh, physiology as well as the knowledge of uh, homeopathy, how they have been integrated to manage these cases. Uh, what are the okay, questions, so Kayur? The first question is uh, from Dr. Jagruti. Uh, uh -huh. Any blood parameters to assess any concomitant comorbidity, XRHS to know why respiratory failure in case one? Yeah, Dr. Chirag, any comorbidity in the first case? Why uh, the person? Basically, uh, that case was a uh, coming up where uh, you know, it was a uh, came and we were into the management of the this uh, acute respiratory failure. But definitely, uh, the looking into the picture, if the uh, the history of the smoking and all that things, and by if I look into the changes which has been made and understanding the emphysema and the lung pathology. Uh, should be uh, uh, not missed and because of the hemoptysis was also a scene. Uh, but definitely that time it was uh, not uh, uh, thought of to go for the this uh, x-ray and uh, blood investigation. Okay. Uh, the second question is from Dr. Nirav. Why in second case sorinum was not taken even for differentiation although it has come first in repertorization and covering all rubrics with four marks? I think uh, in the second case, uh, when the totality has made, the, definitely the repertorization has been done. But looking into the uh, the pace of the this uh, you know uh, pathology, there was a gradual pace, and uh, that there are a differentiation with the other drugs which has been seen, and there is a characteristic uh, time modality which has been seen. That is aggravation three, and though it has it has been a in a repertory, it has been well represented the sorinum, but as far as the lung affection is there, the kalika with the greenish discharge it has been a thought of the gradual. We have a couple of questions on uh, Zoom chat. Uh, Dr. Kanayalal, why you have not defined the case and started CR along with cardiologist opinion? In the last case. Okay, so basically, uh, the uh, you know the patient has been uh, came for the treatment of the RS complaint. Definitely, we have later on defined the case, but the primary focus is to go for the cardiac surgery, and that's why the uh, the primary focus was to reduce this uh, respiratory complaint and to send the patient for the this uh, heart surgery, and that uh, focused. Uh, uh, objective was there and later on we have defined the case 
and uh, at present the patient is under the treatment of the physician and he is doing well okay a question from okay. kumar what must be done to incorporate these pathophysiological insights in the teaching of materia medica at ug and pg level any rewriting of textbooks needed chirag <laughs> sir <laughs> uh definitely uh see when if we uh, to be very frank uh when i look at into all this case and i refer the boger and the william bird and uh, uh they will definitely tell us by looking in, uh, you know as a physiology teacher they were already there but it has been a very we have not able to interpret it properly and now when i look back into the all this uh even the clark they have very well demonstrated this uh, pathophysiology and the functioning changes into the each and every materia medica uh bibin sir you can uh, more tell because uh, you are the materia medica teacher no no, no. I, i i i am not materia medica teacher alone there are so many materia medica teachers so that's not an issue issue is uh, what sir is saying is that the insight what we are getting through our current knowledge of pathophysiology uh, are we able to uh, comprehend it and demonstrate uh, through the writing of materia medica organon or repertory so that you know we are scientifically and uh, more evidence based uh, things are there in our textbooks so we need to rewrite so all physiology textbooks are written from a concept of what a normal functions are but how do they get integrated into homeopathic practice uh, none of the books available from a homeopathic perspective so all our books including anatomy physiology pathology has to be written from a hanemanian concept of man and a travel from the health to disease so we need, all need to rewrite all those textbooks so that uh, uh, the student is able to comprehend and see it as an integrations as an individualizations and as generalizations all the concepts are being ingrained so he wants you to start writing the physiology from that perspective and write a new book where at the physiology level you are able to demonstrate certain mathematical insights thank you we will i will try Ah. Okay, so that uh, uh, KU ends the first presentation, and uh, from physiology now we need to travel to the surgery, and uh, I mean this was uh, a very very interesting uh, sharing by Dr. Nilesh about uh, congenital hernia in a children. Uh, I was going through the literature as well as I uh, I was reading that uh, what is the scope, and then when I had in uh, these cases uh, we realized that uh, there are certain processes which are incomplete or which are halted or which are obstructed and as a, uh, a homeopathic physicians whether we are able to restart rekindle or promote so that the nature the body is able to complete the processes of development and this is an uh, interesting insight for all of us that us many a times we leave cases that this is a surgical case and i have nothing to do but if we are able to understand the state and stage of that illness and if we are able to support the natural processes or enhance the healing process probably we have got a better scope uh, as an homeopath and uh, we can avoid a lot of unnecessary surgeries so this is an uh, eye opener from dr nilesh and uh, we are happy to you know present him in this icr month uh, he resisted initially with a lot of work and all that but uh, i wanted that he should share this knowledge because delaying sharing this knowledge may put other people to push other uh, congenital hernia for surgery so i i thought that uh, why leave him so under all stressful situations he uh, you know uh, accepted my request and uh, my order in that sense and then he he, he had i left him That's with no choice <laughs> so uh, <laughs> uh, i will request dr nilesh to share his experience not one or two cases there are five cases of congenital hernia which were treated and many more to come and we all can contribute and demonstrate 
uh, the scope of homeopathy in so called surgical disorders so dr nilesh it's all yours hydrocil na ha sorry hydrocil i'm sorry ah yeah i'm sorry i'm sorry <laughs> sometimes uh, when nilesh is there in front no you'll forget something So is the green visible? Yes, yes. Go ahead. Okay. Sure. So thank you, Vipin sir, and uh, thank for introduction. And uh, I welcome you all for this uh, journey of learning. I thank MLD MHI and ICR uh, uh, organization to give me this opportunity to share my experience uh, of uh, treating. Uh, uh, role of homeopathy in treatment of congenital hydrophilia today the objective of my presentation is demonstrating the scope of homeopathy in treating the congenital hydrophilia appreciating the role of homeopathic medicine in rekindling the natural process to resolve the congenital hydrophilia demonstrating importance of updating the knowledge to understand natural development and resolution of reversible congenital condition using differently indicated course for treatment of the same condition demonstrating the source book data of masters being proved by our clinical experiences and vital importance is keeping the documentation for the scientific evidence for learning and sharing so we'll proceed with directly case this is a case of a 2 years old male child one fine evening my family physician friend has called me up that uh, doctor we have one case recently there is some uh, changes has occurred in the scrotum and mother has uh, seen some swelling in that and surgeon has diagnosed as hydrocele and he has advised for surgery that was in uh, 22 9 can we have any solution for that because he is having already one a uh, grave disease in him so can we uh, help him through homeopathy okay i said that you send the case we'll see that and he came down with uh, this uh, usg and this is the photograph in front of you it says that there is a left sided hydrocele uh, incited cord hydrocele with the measurement is there the picture is taken on 24914 as a clinician some question has arisen in my mind this is the case of congenital hydrocele it's a surgical condition what is it how does it develop what are the types how does this differ from the adult variety what is the what is, if not treated any complication is there and what is the role of homeopathy in this disorder because this is what we see is as a uh, surgical condition now let us see what are these clinical condition hydrocele is a fluid built up in the thin pouch that hold the testis in the scrotum the incidence of congenital hydrocele is 1 out of 10 baby born with hydrocele at the birth how does this develop what is the pathophysiology a hydrocele can start before even the baby born because testis grow inside the belly and then they move down through into the scrotum through a short tunnel is called as tunica vagina a sac is filled with the fluid after the birth within one year the tunnel is closed and the sac is sealed off before birth and the baby's uh, body absorbs the fluid inside if there is a failure in closure to that tunnel and if the reabsorption of fluid is not there that result into the congenital hydrocele there are types of congenital hydrocele uh congenital type and acquired type there is communicating and non communicating we are not going to detail about that but our case is encysted cord hydrocele that comes under non communicating hydrocele and what its implication usually it's a benign condition that doesn't require surgery it resolve on its own a non communicating hydrocele often dissolve by one year of age but when to intervene how when to treat a hydrocele in child intervention has certain indication where it is not disappear by one year of age if it gets bigger that is communicating type 
if it turns large or ten and regarding our case insect insisted hydrocell of code it leads to ballooning and wide or wideness so the separation of wall or processes and that doesn't allow the wall to be adhered and the process should be complicated and high hence is likely to go into complication then what are the complication if remain untreated the complication will be infection twisting of testes that is torsion tumor hematocell hernia and these are the complication then is the surgery the only option that remain with us let us have answer with this uh, question uh, this case we are progressing into the so case one are you getting i am there na hello yeah, please go ahead you are audible okay. okay the case one is also case of a hispron disease sore segment there is a complaint of constipation the parents has to give purgative or head to need to pass the steel rod to initiate the process of defecation once in one or two days if it doesn't pass there is a attacks of severe vomiting and has to take a day care hospital for the uh, this attacks of vomiting and also case of allergic bronchitis so this was the situation clinical with us physical generals hot thirstless hepatitis is poor desire for mother's milk perspiration more on calf on exertion craving for sweet chocolate ice cream and chronic constipation at a disposition level now mother's mental state though the family was open but mother is a typical you no know, mental state that i want a male child because he was in female child earlier the it it was finding it difficult for mother to carry the child because she was constantly feeling there is a stone kept on his in her womb and she was constantly feeling dragging into the stomach uh, into the abdomen lower abdomen child behavioral characteristic is child is very much pampered by the family grandparents were following all the instruction whatever told by patient they fulfill all the demand in turn the child is turn very obsessive obstinate see he screams and seeks in anger if he demands this food not fit it it is likely to be in pampered child when this sort of condition is there he is very much irritable can't tolerate even any contradiction beats his elder child sister if he if she doesn't uh, follow her him instruction very restless never sit in one place one person has to be behind him all the time to take care of him patient is like like to go you know, bike for riding so it's a customary when father comes back from the work na he has to take him for the ride before his dinner that was the customary in the uh, uh, family in society patient is boss in the house but very meek and docile outside wo ghar mein sher rehta hai aur bahar bigi billi ban jata hai what was the totality obstinate restlessness shrieking screaming indigestible thing craving for left sided hydrocell desire for sweet ice cream chocolate and bathing ever than to he just screams when somebody ask for bath this was the repertorial seat in front of us clearly indicating the lycopodium the depicting force was selected as lycopodium susceptibility is moderate to high the potency selection was 200 to 1m the miasm was psychotic repetition was infrequent this is the follow up chart on 159 the patient has came to me the sl was given at that time after uh, case was defined on 249 i have introduced lycopodium 200 one dose on 110 the size has started improving also there was a no respiratory involve, uh, involvement in that on 810 subsequent substantially the size of the cyst was very less 30% respiration was clear clear and his state of constipation also started improving no purgative is needed and uh, he was he used to pass two to three time to in a day at a time lycopodium 200 was repeated on 1510 the size was almost 90% better his weight was also improved and lycopodium 200 again given so this was the condition on 1510 the 159 to 1510 it is just one month time total four weeks duration three doses of lycopodium was used and you can have a comparative picture of 159 and 
this is a improvement that we have got. Then what our homeopathic medicine has done, that question has arrived. It has rekindled the arrested process of development, the closing of tunica vaginalis, the reabsorption of fluid, and the resolution occurred at a rapid pace. This is what I have learned from this. Then the second series of questions has arrived in the medicine. The data written in our source book regarding the treatment of hydrocyl in children, what's its impl implication? The rubrics are given in the repertory about the congenital hydrocyl, how we can use it. What the commentator has written about the different clinical surgical condition and their experience of the treatment, how we can utilize this in our clinical practice, whether all of above can be explored as indication as any, any curative role because these are clinical state. It is, it is not coming into proving. Then let us have answer through this second question, second case. Master N is a four-year-old child. He came to me in 2009. He's my brother's son. The mother has called me up that there is some changes that I am seeing in the size of the quotum. It is gradually increasing over a period of time. That is last one month. So I have asked in the evening that you come. Let us see, US US advice. It was right sided paramedic code hydrocyl. Surgeon's opinion has taken advice for surgery. Now, this was the case history available to us. Associated complaint is gas constipation, obstetric disease. Mother has lost one, fem uh, one child IOFD prior to this. Uh, physical journals are hot, thirstless, uh, thirst for little quantity perspiration profuse on scalp, hangnail because he is having habit of biting the nail, craving for sweet, banana, fried, curd, stool constipation. Now child's behavior char characteristic. Family background, both parents are physically disabled. They have lost their first child, so they are very much anxious and protective for the child. Naturally, child become obstinate, very pampered, can't tolerate any contraindication. Patient wants all what he wants. If not given, he strikes his head, roll over on the floor, beats the mother, throws the thing, screams in anger. But all things are in house only. Outside, again, piggy billy, nice and obedient in the society. But he's very restless, can't sit in one place. But another one peculiar characteristic what mother has said is a question bank. He always goes on firing question one after another. What is this? Ye kaisa hota hai? Ye kya hota hai? That was a, no, he's like that. He's very inquisitive. What is the totality being erected from that is obstinate child, anger, contradiction, striking in children, shrieking, screaming, shouting in children, inquisitive, craving sweet, uh, chronic constipation, thirst for small and frequent and hot patient. This is the reportorial sheet available, lycopodium, calcarea, Sulfur, belladonna, tuberculinum, all are indicated remedy. Again, depicting force was selected as lycopodium. Susceptibility is high, sensitivity is high, potency selection was 200 to 1M. Repetition, infrequent. Now, on 11.49, I have started, USD was done, confirmed the diagnosis, and I have started with lycopodium 200 wonders. The size has started improving from very first week. There was constipation also improved. There was no other complaint and hydrocell size was improved. By 2515, the size was almost normal. The patient has went to maternal place. It was a vacation period. So they have went there. His constipation has improved. There is no other uh, complaint and lycopodium 200 one packet was weekly due, continued during that time. Later on, there is no recurrence and the swelling in scrotum, uh, scrotum has never come. So the learning from the case is the data recorded in source book is the experience of the master and it is clinically proved. When we use in our practice, we got that result. Lycopodium in hydrocyl in children, many materia medica is written. Many therapeutic booths has mentioned about the hydrocyl and its management. Many remedies are mentioned under one condition. So this references gives indication and how curative role and there have curative role as well. Now, 
the repertorial coverage. Now, these two cases have been managed with lycopodium. There are many medicines are report, uh, uh, you know, recorded under the rubric hydrocyl. Now, if we go for the uh, complete repertory, male genitalia, hydrocyl, congenital hydrocyl, there are abrotinum, bryonia, graphitis, pulsatilla, rhododendron. Then I have combined all major repertories and I have got this four mark remedies like graphitis, pulsatilla, rhododendron, silicia, sulfur, all remedies are there as you see in your screen. Total 100 remedies are mentioned in complete repertory under rubric hydrocyl. Complete, complete repertory and BPR has mentioned about lycopodium in hydrocyl. Now only lycopodium can be, can be used. What are the other indications? That's the answer in the third uh, uh, case. This was the third case. This is case I was managing earlier even. This is a short history of this patient. In year 2008, he was under my uh, treatment. His master AM four years, his close relatives staying in same premises in my house only, uh, ground state. He's a case of ADHD with LRDI. His CR was calcary iode. I used to give him 200 to 1 m was raised to potency. Intercurrently, tuberculinum was given at that time. Now, response with the medicine was the hyperactivity was controlled. The respiratory attack was quite uh, responded with that. And mother's remark was that whenever you get the, give that puri at the time, no packet at the time, his uh, hyperactivity definitely improved with that. So there was no doubts about the whatever the forces were acting at that time. On 1812-08, that is 2008, the Pethas mother has just given me a notice that, that there is some change in the size of protum left side. And since last one week, I'm observing the size is gradually increasing and today is more, most uh, increased size. So I have asked them to come to clinic. It was left-sided, scrotal swelling, cuff reflex was positive and translucent test was positive. I have advice for surgery that has came out with left-sided hydrocyl. Surgeon's opinions has taken uh, and uh, he has written in bold letter that surgery is the only option for this. Okay, I have asked them that we will start with homeopathic treatment at that time. Analysis of the case is the left-sided hydrocyl is there. Patient is already on selected remedy, defecting remedy, and the medicine is acting on the case. The disposition is showing certain new complaint, new form. Is other any specific medicine indicated in that? In repertory, left-sided hydrocyl in Boger repertory, rhododendron and silicia is written. And in Fartag and Kent repertory, rhododendron and digital is written. Now, this is the Matriamedica coverage. In different, different Matria Medica, these are, this is written by Margaret Tyler. In, in one, uh, one remembering curing of a small boy of hydrocyl with rhododendron, it has a great reputation for hydrocyl, especially in children, even from the birth. And Dr. John Tassi, it's a case of hydrocyl in five years, standing from birth, has co uh, cured with rhododendron. He has used the uh, water potency uh, one in three part, and he has mentioned this. So it was enough for selecting the rhododendron as an indicated medicine. I have uh, selected on 12, 18-12-08, rhododendron 30, one packet weekly was selected. I, the case, the patient was staying just downstairs. So it was very easy for me for the frequent follow-up follow of that. From I used to take him almost one or two once in uh, one or two days. The side was improving from the day when I introduced uh, rhododendron. From uh, February, uh, December, uh, sorry, it is January 2009. I have forgotten that. January uh, 2009, February, and in March, the size is gradually improving. I have consistently continue with rhododendron 30 when packed weekly because the system is gradually showing the improvement over a period of time. So rhododendron has uh, 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 taken care of this uh, surgical condition. In March, I have stopped and put in the uh, regular con defecting constitutional medicine letter. Few more experience to look at a glance in pictures. This was the case I have taken on 3117. 
this was a case of master d it was case 4 you can see the left sided rotal swelling and on 31 7 uh, 31 3 17 this was case taken and on 27 6 uh, the case is improved nicely because of shortage of time we are not going into detail but the data i am giving into analysis table about what medicines have been used and how frequently it has been used so within i think three weeks three months that is 12 weeks the case has been resolved this is the case number four you can see the difference in the size and uh, uh, more of more often this case was of a uh, brother who is servicing in civil hospital so he is cross checking our result with frequently consulting uh, surgeon over there that whether the size is improving he has taken two three times sonography also there in uh, uh, the civil hospital so it was uh, confirmed that our medicine is acting that was a uh, good part uh, to get the result confirmed this was the case five. This was Master Manan. Uh, the case has been uh, uh, seen in on 14-11-2018. Master Manan, you can see the uh, sonography which shows that is a, a loculated hydrocyl tunica vaginalized and the size is also mentioned and the sonography and the uh, picture of this uh, disease uh, condition is also there in our screen. Then on 5-7, actually, what, what was there? The case is improved in March only. That is from, I think, uh, uh, November uh, till March. A mother is servicing in Bhavnagar. So he, she went there for the exam purpose. And uh, the cases came to us back into uh, July because of this, uh, there, there was work in the school. They went there. So they came to Junag and uh, the sonography was asked to do that you do the sonography. The sonography has came normal on 5-7. The picture is taken on 5-7. That is absolutely normal. So all five cases has improved. Uh, you can have a glance of the two comparative picture. One is taken on 14-11 and another is, sorry, the date is a little bit difficult. Okay. So what is the analysis of all the five cases is? The associated complaint in all five cases is one is having hysterum disease, another one is an ADHD, the master AM was. All are having recurrent respiratory tech inf uh, infection was there. Associated complaint constipation was present in all the cases. Miasmatic understanding was psychotic, considering the pathophysiology as I mentioned earlier. Fundamental state was different in all the cases and I mentioned psychosyphilitic in case one, psychotubercular syphilitic in case two, in case three, and uh, case four, that is uh, tubercular syphilitic and psychotubercular syphilitic. All susceptibility except in Hysterum's disease, moderate to high, otherwise all are high. The medicinal force which were used was lycopodium, lycopodium, calcarea iode, in fourth case, that was the case of the brother who was servicing in uh, civil hospital, tuberculinum was given. And in last case, lycopodium was given, that the mother was servicing in Bhavnagar. In phase remedy, rhododendron was used in calcarea iod case, that is case three, that is my relative's case. In both the cases, we have started with rhododendron, but it was not indicated and it was discontinued within two to three weeks since the response was not available. And then it was put back to constitutional medicine. And within short time, we got the result. So response is achieved with the constitutional medicine in four cases, except the case of uh, that ADHD case where rhododendron has helped. Time of duration, five to eight weeks earlier, then when we have introduced empirically that non-indicated remedy rhododendron, the time of the treatment has stretched a little bit, 12 to 10 weeks. Because if it has been earlier, then the time duration will be even curtailed to 5 to 8 weeks or 6 to 8 weeks. So what was my conclusion and learning from all this is? Congenital hydrocyl of scrotum is a benign condition, does not require surgery until it causes pain and complication. Homeopathic medicine helps in en enhancement of rekindling of the natural processes. 
constitutional force in receive, uh, force is required for achieving those results phase remedy also give results if indicated and registered documentation is most important aspect of the case for sharing and learning i have not uh, that uh, uh, photographs of the case 2 and 3 so scientifically scientificity is proved through evidence only and that is what i have learned from this thank you all for my uh, uh, for your all patient hearing all the uh, friends colleagues uh, my teachers guru special thanks to bipin sir because he never allow he never allow you to be at your ease he never request you he only orders you so he is a very task master and um, um, uh, it is obvious that uh, task creator is kumar sir uh, i really thank both of them because in my all odd situation they help me even bipin sir has edited my presentation he knows what is there it going on dr hitesh pure has he has initiated me in may i have refused refused him sorry sir for that uh dr kayur for his technical support and to all my patient who put trust on us thank you very much thank you dr nilesh and uh, it was really uh, very heartening to see you know the documented uh, evidence of uh, so called uh, uh, surgical okay. disorder okay. in which in his screen hello i will request dr nilesh to kindly stop sharing his screen and i will request one minute one, one, one minute one video yeah okay sorry yeah, yeah no issue so i mean uh, th this was uh, one of uh, the most uh, interesting presentations because we have almost uh, gave it up uh, you know that we don't have any scope in many of such cases but we need to really look at the natural processes and uh, how homeopathy uh, at a right time and with the uh, right interventions can definitely support the nature the forces in body uh, to take care of all these uh, surgical conditions but the, the one warning sign which uh, he has said at the end and we all must keep that in uh, mind about the you know continuous observation for complications because then you are subjecting somebody for the lifetime uh, distress so you know just seeing these cases and saying that okay we can do anything and everything is not the message please don't take that message home whatever cases where the surgical intervention is required is required provided you are quite uh, insightful about the state the stage of the illness the complications the outcome and uh, how good the immediate surgery or a late surgery or no surgery will be there so as a clinician you have to be very alert and agile when you are uh, tackling these cases so the presentation was to show you the scope this was also show you that uh, there is a uh, limitation sometime and you have to be very alert and not subject your patient to unnecessary distress and complications but definitely you can make a huge difference in lot of these cases uh, in a uh, in a time to come so it was wonderful uh, to hear you nilesh i mean uh, <laughs> without this i mean uh, so many people would have uh, thought that uh, okay these conditions have to be directly referred to the surgeon so thank you thank you so much for uh, taking out time out of the, your distress and uh, you, give man. us uh, this insight okay uh, any question uh, kayo couple, couple of questions on youtube ah. in lyco case can we give lyco 30 bd until improvement starts okay see the understand i am i am giving answer to that sir see the understanding of susceptibility in that case was high moderate to high okay Uh, first case and second case it was high a plain case so started with 200 why to go with 30 bd and then raising the potency till the response come so that is why understanding of this uh, case from that point of uh, from that perspective was high susceptible that is why 200 infrequently was selected unnecessarily we are wasting the time in that another question another question is uh, 
why do such type of presentations called congenital even though it was appear few age after birth see the process has started since the birth in presentation i think it is there before the baby born this thing is there because this is the process of descending the stator from abdomen to scrotum and the tunica vaginalis is remain patent and that is why it is called as congenital the appearance of disease may be later on the process is there but the appearance can be notice can be later on that is why this say, this uh, disease are case called as congenital okay one more question i don't know i mean it's not relevant though but still can we cure inguinal hernia hiatus hernia like congenital hydrosis okay sir sir will give answer because we have discussed about that <laughs> let <Yeah>, me <laughs> no no we we don't have so much of experience uh, i do have couple of cases of uh, adult hydrocil uh, regressing uh, but uh, now we are in the process but most of these hernias uh, they develop because of the weakness in the wall and sometimes it is beyond uh, you know uh, repair so you just uh, you know it, it's better to give a support uh, uh, with surgery or repair it and then give constitutional so that it do not recur that is a better way but if it is an initial and the weakness is not there i mean it's worth trying constitutional uh, or indicated medicine to treat such cases so thank you nilesh uh, for uh, this wonderful uh, morning uh, treat uh interestingly the i was just reading uh, one of the uh, input on our chat box by capsesor that dear nilesh please publish article in dish supported by investigation role of homeopathy in apparently surgical disorders can be established with such studies thank you sir i will i will do that and, and the... yeah, yeah yeah nilesh yeah. yeah and and that is the subject of our next presentation <laughs> that means again capsesor is fixing me up <laughs> yeah 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 so uh, it's it's a, it's a uh, it's a subject of our so nilesh you can now uh, stop your video we can go to the next presentation and uh, the request by capsesor is well taken because uh, that is uh, you know it reaches to the many people some uh, with this uh, publications and when people read it you know it it not only give them the directions it gives them the insight it talks about the scope and limitation of homeopathy and how does this uh, publications and reading uh, these journals or these uh, articles you know enhance our uh, clinical practice it enhance our insight into the different facets of homeopathic practice how does it uh, get us a confidence and how do we understand uh, and review this for our uh, you know development not of as a homeopath but as an homeopathic practitioner teacher and educationist so uh, i mean uh, the importance of writing publishing reading applying in a clinical practice going back republishing rewriting recommunicating with the writer and evolving a science based on a scientific uh, and evidence based uh, science so that we gradually move to the first choice of the treatment and for that we need to publish 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 read 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 uh, get into the feedback mechanisms so that uh, all of us uh, grow and help science to grow so uh, dr nikunj uh, jani our uh, reader in department of repertory and our editor uh, of our jish he has a uh, lot of these experiences of uh, uh, being you know uh, used from whatever uh, extensive reading he does of, of lot of these journals not from the time when he has started publishing jish but from the uh, beginning he has used this journal as a stepping stone in uh, solving lot of difficult cases and also that has helped him in uh, integrating and incorporating uh, basic uh, facts in jish so i would request dr nikunj to share his journey 
of reading these uh, quality journals the articles and how it has helped him in grow as a clinician as a teacher and as a educationist dr nikunj are you there yes sir so thank you dr nikunj for the taking this uh, interesting and uh, uh, difficult subject and probably it will motivate us to read 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 and go into the cycle of giving feedback publishing reviewing reading so you can now take over the take us to your journey of uh, this uh, journal uh, reading and uh, evolution as a clinician thank you bipin sir i think uh, thank you very much uh, and uh, <clears throat> i think uh, what i will be today sharing is uh, a journey which most of us as homeopaths or as practitioners undertake um, my journey might be limited the amount of years but yeah. i think many more will have uh, more uh, experiences as we go along what are the objectives which we are going to attain in this session we are going to look at importance of reading uh, homeopathic journals to enhance clinical practice we are also going to look into the rich heritage which homeopaths have a legacy which we are inheriting from the masters understanding the current reading trends of homeopaths and also uh, we are we will try and see what are the changing needs of the science and profession and observe the changing trends in publication especially in homeopathy so how does a published article help a clinician i think i will probably share a journey uh, of how i undertook when i started my practice after completing uh, you finished your ug uh, probably joined icr after that joined md finished md and in a practitioner when you start how does an article or how do i see journal as my in my journey as a clinician start with early experiences heel pains most of us encounter this we have seen it time and often most of us have seen this in our practice we have seen the role of homeopathy helping this complaints i had seen it in the background uh, the rheumatology posting helped me uh, especially when i was dealing in post graduation it helped me to uh, give, you know that homeopathy is going to help in these conditions but at times you are in a position that uh, you know that the strategies also that constitutional medicine indicated medicine if there is an acute there are a set of medicines which we use we know pulsatilla helps uh, ruta rustox that's what the matramedic and the repertory gives we are able to do and at times when we are leading with plantar fasciitis uh, more into uh, actively we there is obviously supports which we give uh, in terms of the pad, heel pads which we, patients use and still patients are not better now i did encounter a lot of these uh, in spite of doing the right things why are they not better we try use different forces like what we saw in dr nilesh's presentation where he uses acute where he uses uh, indicated chronic uh, indicated medicine and then a constitutional medicine so one dives into reading and uh, dr kopikar's book of uh, 70 years of clinical practice that's where he mentions uh, the indication of using very frequently hikla lava and orum met as a remedy because he operates on the concept of exostosis and he also sees the spur uh, in the heel also a form of exostosis where he sees hikla lava and uh, he also shares that orum uh, met has reduced uh, in fact even dissolves as we know uh, the power of orum met now uh, when i was doing this uh, there was an article homeopathy clinical case recorder is a journal uh, which was uh, published now uh, it, the publication has been stopped dr d e mistri from solapur who was a surgeon uh, he would publish this journal and uh, probably one of the as an editor if i have to see and look up to he is probably a industrious editor and you will see when if you are uh, fortunate enough to go through the journal of uh, homeopathy case uh, clinical case recorder you will see the kind of scholarship which the editor does he reviews all the journals which are published he prepares a summary and he puts his synopsis in every issue and mind you that is no mean task and he does that and he did that uh, for a long period of time and in that uh, i found an article by uh, dr suman mishra sc mishra from jabalpur where he uh, published that zincum met is one specific remedy where he has used it in his practice entirely now uh, he did it after uh, doing a conclusion of the repertorial study he selected he says when you take up kent's repertory go to the extremities chapter 
select all the rubrics of heel pain and there you get zincum which comes up as uh, the nearly the remedy which he uses in his practice now i had no experience of using zincum now uh, as a student of repertory i wanted to verify what he was saying in his article so i did the job of taking up all the symptoms i put them into the repertorization and i really found out that zincum does come up as one of the top 3 remedies which is never thought by us i had never thought i only knew zincum for a specific role we know zincum uh, has an affinity for certain areas but zincum in heel pain and then i took up the study when you look at source books Herring has listed a list of symptoms uh, in uh, heel pain, especially heel and extremities of zincum. Same is even done by Clark. And the repertory, when you do it for yourself, also validates the claim of the author. And the cases where I was not able to give result, I used zincum there, and zincum brought in the results which were needed, which was not being, which was not available through the other remedies which I had tried earlier. now this when you do this as i was just a young practitioner who had just started practice and i felt it was my duty to inform the author that i had undertaken this process and i should be thankful to him that his article allowed me to solve certain cases which were not being done by me and uh, unfortunately there was no email mentioned of the author in the article only there was his postal address so i uh, wrote him a letter and i posted it to him and to my surprise uh, mentioning my email and mobile number so that if you know in just in case he wanted to get in touch and forgot about it and uh, to my surprise after probably a span of time uh, there was a parcel which arrived in my clinic uh, with the address which i had given and uh, it contained the author's three books which he had written and uh, also a letter stating that uh, he was very happy that somebody had read it and uh, somebody comes back uh, telling that the article has been useful and uh, he also shared his email that time that which i had requested him to do so and uh, and i was not expecting i was a novice i had just started practice i had no name at all uh, and uh, you send a author the author uh, is gracious enough to send you his published books and he tells uh, read them and see if you are able to learn something from this as well and it was a gesture which really touched me i continued the correspondence with the author especially if uh, some of my articles would get published especially in vital informer i would get a message or an email from him read your article keep doing the good work uh, a short email and uh, pleasantries would be exchanged till his death in 2018 uh, the correspondence continue it was not a regular correspondence but especially when the article of mine pub- got published he would make a point to just drop in an email and just say continue the good work now this for a young clinician who's just starting his practice he is very very encouraging and uh, the journal allowed me to establish professional relationships that we value each other and we can learn from each other from peer learning and this was something which went a long way in as i progressed in my career as a clinician so this may be a small case where you know uh, an extremity was used but i think uh, it started of how a journal helps you to understand and opens up newer avenues of learning when one does that again earlier experiences of psoriasis of course uh, palgar uh, has a, a brilliant skin opd and uh, we had a well established department where we saw variety of cases of skin when we were doing our post graduate training i started my practice and uh, when you start uh, encountering psoriasis and you see that this condition is coming to you quite often and when uh, one needs is a refresher course one needs to understand we have seen cases as students as a post graduate trainees but when i want it in a nutshell where do i refer to i think what uh, sir vipin uh, sir also raised a point uh, in chirag's presentation was that we are uh, we need books which are written from our perspectives where we are able to see all the areas of clinical practice in one nutshell and i think uh, ijhm needs no introduction uh, it was edited by illustrious dr praful barwalia sir and uh, probably the kind of uh, scholarship which sir has the journal uh, inculcated all the values which a good journal should have and i think uh, probably one of the best uh, journal my favorite journal covers or the jacket has been uh, ijhm because uh, you see the banyan tree the tagore saying i think it's beautiful uh, and uh, 
what this issue of uh, psoriasis did was it has got a variety of cases. You have, of course, CBG and SERS cases there. You have NVM and uh, uh, sir talking about psoriatic arthropathy. You have variety of cases which cover all the areas which a practicing clinician should refer to when it comes to psoriasis. And these are my early experiences. Of course, as we grew up in practice, we were able to see more dissertations. We were able to see more articles in peer-reviewed journals. But this journal became a starting point for one to actually have a short refresher course for a condition. It gave you experiences of brilliant clinicians who have been able to make a lot of change in their practice. It gave you pointers of how one should go about and it allowed one to actually uh, take an overview and apply it in their practice. And of course, it helped uh, a young clinician to grow also in its own practice. So this was another issue which when it comes to reading, and I think this helped uh, to develop certain insights into one clinical condition. Again, uh, alopecia. Now, uh, I've seen, as I said, skin OPD was uh, very much uh, a very well established OPD in uh, RHH Palgar. And when one sees a lot of cases of alopecia, what, when alopecia first came to me in practice in the clinic, I was, the questions were what potency to be used? What would be the repetition? Because you are, it may look simple, but you are essentially managing an autoimmune disorder. And again, homeopathic case, uh, clinical case recorder, I came across a case report by Dr. S.K. Mamgain from Dehradun. And uh, if people have read Dr. Mamgain's cases, he is a brilliant uh, prescriber when it comes to a lot of pathologically advanced cases. Um, illustrious uh, author, he has got a lot of cases which are published in various journals. And when one reads his cases, you are able to see the grasp of cross pathology and the manner in which homeopathy helps in, his, uh, in these kind of conditions, which at times we are not aware of it. And he talks of a small case report wherein he has used ustiligo as a remedy to treat alopecia in a young male. Uh, of course, Istuligo was prescribed on the indication of that case. But what he talked and what struck me was the manner in which he discussed the posology. He said he has not used uh, frequent repetitions and infrequent repetitions of maybe a potency 30 and then not even repeating it and going to the next potency has helped him get the desired results in uh, his practice. And, uh, you know, you read... And I uh, remember my teacher uh, in undergraduate days, he said a uh, homeopathic student must attend seminars or read. He may not apply it in his practice right away, but one keeps and notes it down. And you know, one refers to them as and when you grow and whenever you need these kind of concepts to come. And the opportunity came up uh, when one of our published cases, I think Anup sir and my case was published in NJH uh, of alopecia. And that was seen by an another homeopathic physician. And uh, the homeopathic physician was uh, staying uh, outside Maharashtra and uh, they referred their cousin who was staying in Mumbai to, to me that, look, this person has got this. Why not you go and uh, consult this person? And probably that opened the Pandora's box. And then one led to another. And I think I have most of the cases which are published, at least personally, I have around six to seven cases published in various journals on alopecia areata and many more which are there in practice when I found. This was one area where I was started getting associated with in my early years of practice that if you have alopecia, the word went, uh, you should go to and consult him. And uh, one gets on to create his own body of knowledge. And I think the talk, uh, the reporting or the finding which was there in the journal is what I also experienced in my own practice and in the cases that one doesn't need to repeat frequently in alopecia, infrequent repetition at times very minimum. And most of the cases, there is hardly a repetition of only two or three doses and how Dr. Nilesh uh, has shared the timeline of the response comes in a very short duration. Similar, uh, the constitutional medicine, I have not seen the role of specific indications Except in COVID, where uh, post-COVID people had hair fall, and in that is the time when constitution did not help, and uh, but it was not alopecia; it was more likely a hair fall, and that is the time I have ever used an uh, indi or acute or a, you know indicated medicine. Otherwise, constitution does the job, and the duration is very short. You are able to see the growth in a very short span of time. 
it starts with a case report which one reads uh, insights into a clinician's uh, mind you apply those insights in your own practice with the knowledges which you have acquired in your own training and you are able to create your own body of knowledge which in turn helps others also to learn from you and you keep learning from your own experiences i think this uh, experience or one journal article took me into a journey and probably uh, it helped me to write uh, and get established as an author uh, you know i had clinical cases to share with the world where i could demonstrate evidence based medicine, uh, clinical homeopathy and it helped me to grow so i think uh, one article can you know make a change uh, to your thinking and it can actually uh, inculcate you or it can promote you to write more and share with the profession more uh, so these were the early experiences which uh, which i acquired and parkinsonism ngh has been around most of us have written for ngh and uh, it has been our uh, learning ground as well this issue of uh, ngh is one of my favorites because this issue encompasses everything what a practitioner needs for understand parkinsonism suddenly there was uh, as you know the clinician sits you are able to see that sun clinical conditions come to your practice and then you start seeing uh, you have experiences but not that great and you know the law of nature that you are blessed with more and more cases of that same condition and you need to deliver results experiences were there i had a certain amount i had seen certain cases but it was a limited experience what i needed was how much is our role what does homeopathy actually do in parkinsonism where in is the what is the potency scale which one uses what will be the repetition how much is good enough in cases of this what is the reversibility a lot of questions which a clinician encounters and i think uh, dr nilesh's presentation also uh, did that and, you know when we sit in our own clinics and nlt sir always says is the internal observer and internal observer is the one who compels you to ask questions what is my role and how much actually i can make a difference in this case and uh, this journal uh, issue ngh issue of parkinsonism was a kind of a uh, great help because it has uh, cases from all schools of homeopathy we have grappled uh, to treat parkinsonism very detailed cases were there one could also see cases where uh, i think uh, a specific mention which i would do is a case series by uh, dr dinesh rao and uh, my dear sir what he had done is uh, he talks of five cases he goes on to go into details of every case what is the and i think all areas of parkinsonism are covered in those five cases which a homeopathic clinician will probably encounter that case series primed me up and it really helped me to take up parkinsonism as a entity because you know one has an experiential learning and then there is a learning which one acquires and this uh, issue was a kind of a learning which i acquired while reading those cases fortunately uh, one of our uh, malad hospital experiences of uh, dr sunil bhalinge sir uh, kamlesh jain and myself also was a part of this uh, issue and we were also able to share uh, what learnings we did in uh, parkinsonism and that also was included in this issue so we could learn from others experiences because the case series by vidyar sir gave an insight there were many more articles in this issue which also allow you to see what you can do to these conditions and uh, the journal helps you to develop your you as a clinician and you are able to give better results you get more better clarity into what you can offer in such clinical cases as well so what is the role of published article and when a published article is the primary role of is writing a case report is sharing evidence based information for educational purposes they have a significant academic value and can deliver learning objectives quite effectively we have seen it in the previous two presentations also and i'm sure when they uh, are turned into case reports one will be able to see a lot of uh, learning from uh, congenital hydrocel jish has one uh, article uh, one case report which has been published of congenital hydrocel one goes on to build a body of knowledge of these five case series will add more and contribute more to the body of knowledge for the profession as i said case reports case series help uh, education of medical students and practitioners i shared the previous experiences as a practitioner i was definitely able to learn a lot from these case reports and publishing uh, clinical experiences one helps readers to identify and deal with similar problems in their own practice may not be similar 
but there will be something which you will be able to take home and apply which i talked about in the alopecia case where i was able to take some lessons from uh, the uh, the uh, the findings which were reported by the author in his own cases so there is a definite role of published articles in medical training and uh, the world acknowledges that as well now as i said earlier homeopathy is grew because of homeopathic journals and i think homeopathic journals in the past have a significant role in the development and spread of homeopathy and we have seen the rise of homeopathy can be attributed to the rise of journals as well and uh, there were a lot of cases and there was a lot of discussion which ensued after the cases were published so what did the old journals contain a lot of clinical experiences and case reports new findings new drug actions were reported conference proceedings a lot of conference proceedings and meetings are there in the old journals homeopathic news ads very interestingly you know if somebody actually wants to really understand what are the kinds of ads uh, which were there in those journals uh, they are really good those vintage ads and obituaries which were, they were carried i think it is also safe to say homeopathy began from a journal dr hanneman published it in hoofland's journal an essay of principles of ascertaining curative powers of the drugs this is how homeopathy started and uh, this is how it was brought and communicated to the world so a journal had a significant role in actually the growth of homeopathy and then homeopathic journals which we are able to see the american journal of homeopathy was one of the significant the journal of american institute of homeopathy which was another uh, benchmarking which was done and then dr constantin herring went on to edit the american journal of homeopathy uh, medicine which you matra medica which he was there and he was the editor the hanimanian monthly had the illustrious uh, dr farrington as one of his editors the organon they have a lot of journals adolf lippi was one who contributed and established a lot of journals so history of medicine gives us a lot of example of journals which were existing and they contributing to the homeopathic science dr kent was an illustrious editor so kent actually was a complete thing he was a practitioner he was a teacher he was a author he was the person who wrote philosophy matra medica repertory and an illustrious editor also so uh, kent went on to edit uh, some of very well uh, known journals of those times the homeopathician was one of them which was published by uh, the society lippi and herring uh, hcln were among the founding members i think uh, the single most important journal which actually uh, contributed to the growth of homeopathy was the homeopathic recorder we are fortunate to see the physical copies of homeopathic recorder palgar library has nearly all the copies of physical copies of homeopathic recorder they are kept in lock and key and uh, one can actually visit and read them they are fragile and uh, it's a treasure and i think the bogus collected works by robert banan which we are now referring to and uh, which the world is now opening up to to understand bogar in detail essentially were all collection of his writings published in homeopathic recorder uh, this went on to understand uh, help the long way in understanding bogar and his concepts which we are now trying to understand and and study in a more detailed manner so journals did play a great role in uh, propagation of homeopathic thought processes and concepts and helped in the growth of homeopathy what we also know is that the previous generation or the masters read a lot the journal survives because there are readers and without the reader there is no journal because if you don't read the journal will stop so do the current generation of homeopathy practitioner read journals and i would say a yes a cross sectional survey which we carried out in 2019 gave a statistics of 93% of homeopathy practitioners felt that reading journals was very vital and important to keeping themselves and homeopathy active and alive 93% is a huge number it was a cross sectional survey and uh, from all walks people had participated in this survey and majority of the homeopaths at least read one journal and out of the multiple uh, reasons why they read uh, the, these were the top four reasons is enhancing the knowledge of homeopathy enhancing clinical knowledge research based aptitude and teaching learning processes which were seen and most of them felt that they should read journals to keep them updated with uh, the current trends in homeopathy as well and most also have said they found difficulty in time to read more but they did try to read one journal or you know they did it in between infrequently 
but this was the stat survey which the findings which came what do the homeopathic practitioners actually want to read the large number of the responses which came up was 91 or more than 90 people prefer to read clinical cases and case reports followed by a second large number is people are now wanting or opening up to read scientific research based articles traditionally homeopathy has always been case reports expressions through case uh, Hello, Dr. Nikunj, are you there? Some problem with his connectivity. Wait, wait, he'll come back. Just keep a watch on. Uh, huh. uh, we are all sorry for the inconvenience. There has been a technical glitch. Thank you for your patience. Yeah, Nikunj is... You'll have to readmit him probably. Yeah, yeah, Nikunj. Uh, there was some kind of a power outage. I'm so sorry, the connection got lost. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Please continue. Please continue. Yeah. 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 Uh, so what we found was uh, cl clinical case reports are the ones which uh, most. Please do the full full screen. Full screen. Yeah. And one finds uh, clinical case reports and scientific based articles are the second most preferred. Of course, then uh, there are the other set of articles which people like to read. And homeopathic, what this survey told us that homeopathic physicians do like to read a lot of case reports. And then, the, uh, as I said earlier, the case reports have helped the growth and the journey of a physician as well. And then as one grows ahead in this process, what are the newer forays which we are able to see? We started with... Uh, the institute started a plan of starting a geriatric medicine department for uh, our RHH Palgar. And uh, the task which my boss, uh, Dr. Anup Nigvekar, uh, did when we started the department uh, was we need to search for the existing body of knowledge which exists as of now uh, of, on homeopathy and geriatrics. Of course, uh, the task was huge. And we went about in that task and we came across very limited data which is there. Uh, talking of uh, early 2016 and uh, 17 when the department uh, was being started. And uh, what is that data which is available? So we went on seeking the data and what upfront which came up as and so the starting points were these two journals. One, uh, again, an issue of IJHM, which is uh, talking of geriatrics. And I think uh, Barwales's editorial in that lays and brings about all the issues which a homeopathic physician dealing in geriatrics will probably encounter. It, uh, it covers all the aspects of it. And also there are certain case reports uh, which are uh, talking about it as well. So this becomes the initial starting point of this is what needs to be done. And then there was a, a homeopathic Diwadi Ankh, which uh, Dr. Vikran Mahajan publishes from uh, for Beacon Foundation. And uh, it had a special issue on Vayavrudh uh, in Marathi, which was on elderly and homeopathy. Uh, the elderly care and homeopathy. So these two became uh, the body, uh, the starting points from which one goes on to uh, uh, develop knowledge. Of course, the department went on to subscribe to all the existing geriatric journals which are published in India, gerontology journals, and also uh, seeking uh, memberships in various societies of geriatrics and uh, establishing your own body of knowledge and of course, getting published and a lot of papers now of geriatric department are in uh, published in peer reviewed journals of not just homeopathy, but also of geriatrics and gerontology. But the starting point is the two journals which the profession has done 
we get to learn from them there are certain insights which we as an at an institutional level develop and then we take it from there and start on to develop our own body of knowledge which uh, the people use it of course the journal the articles written by the department are now being cited by other people as well the google scholar tells us that so we are able to contribute to the body of knowledge in a much better way but you know there is all gango you know there is always the starting point and these two journals did serve as a starting point when we went on to study a subject or establish a department uh, at the early stages same is uh, as a teacher you grow as a clinician uh, in your own clinic you start uh, settling to some extent and then there is uh, you are a teacher now i joined uh, and there is certain repertories or the clinical repertories which don't use so often in our own clinical practices i have learned this repertory we had elaborate sessions on this we had taken up uh, some cases also which we had worked on it so i knew the plan i knew the construction uh, as a student of post graduation in repertory when i joined as a faculty and that is a one year department decided that we are going to take up regional repertories for dissertations this year and uh, yingling's repertory was selected as one of the repertories where we would be using it in labor and induction of labor and we will be applying this repertory now the problem which the student came up with the department is what is the review of literature which the student builds its premise on to go on to study uh, obviously it was a prospective study so student would work we knew all the design was there but how does one build a review upon and uh, build your uh, the whole logic on what are you going to do and uh, vital informer is a journal which is i think most of us are aware of it is well read journal published from new delhi and dr krishna murthy from chennai published one article in vital informer where he he goes on to talk about utility of yings in repertory in his cases i think he had shared a uh, three four cases uh, which was there and uh, he very demonstrated uh, the role of yingling's repertory in his own practice that became the entry point for the student the student was asked uh, to send correspond with the author keeping the faculty members in uh, the cc to the mail the author was gracious enough to send his own personal cases i think he, the author sent his own personal five more cases other than the journal cases and uh, he said any more help needed he would be happy to help the student went on to build on the review or the primary cases which the author had sent and then student went on to apply them and do it of course this is one of the department's finest works uh, where we are able to see the application of this repertory through well documented prospective study homeopathy studied on partogram the role of homeopathy in labor induction of labor Uh, it's a detailed study which is done and uh, when the student was able to come up with valid conclusions the department head anup sir decided to convey the findings to the author he wrote a thanking mail to the author as the head of department of helping his student and a kind of a unique private practitioner institutional relationship was developed the author invited him whenever he is in chennai to uh, visit him and now see uh, you know this is the need of the hour private practitioner the institutes or the teaching institutions tend to at times disregard the value of the private practitioner who has the experience in clinics and private practitioners are very happy giving and delivering results and promoting homeopathy but their knowledge needs to go to the institutions where students are being trained and this is a very unique way in which a private practitioner contributes to the development of a uh, educational uh, student in an educational manner uh, the educational institute reports the findings duly back to the practitioner thanking him for his help and the profession grows and i think it's a mutual respect and trust which helps the profession to grow in a much better way new pregnancies these are case reports which help us to grow apply it into little bit of practice and of course with the evidence based and homeopathy being looked upon as uh, you know a lot of times we are criticized for not being evidence based how do we uh, what are the newer needs and how our newer responses have to be i had a case of the uh, young anesthetist you know probably a year a couple of years younger than me visited on the insistence of his wife who was a firm believer for a case of rheumatoid arthritis for his mother and uh, he had doubts and concerns of his uh, role regarding who would be now uh, what i was very sure i would be able to deliver uh in terms of uh, rheumatoid arthritis because one uh, is the you know you are uh, you have 
establish you have seen a lot of experiences i was blessed as an undergraduate student in cmp i was uh, privy to dr mamtara and dr nimish mehta's rheumatology opd i had learned there i come to icr i was uh, my uh, supervisors all of them had cases of uh, rheumatological origin so i learned from there i go to palgar the huge rheumatology opd which was there i uh, had all i had the fortune of having the posting of all my 3 years of residency i had a rheumatology posting and then when i joined as a faculty i was given the clinical opd to assist dr uh, kapsa sir in uh, rheumatology and then which continues till date so this was one area which i knew that i had seen i had years of experience to me and i could deliver the results but the thing is you know how do you convince a child outside an hamlet's toy shop that he is going to get whatever he wants in that shop but he has to come inside only if you step in you will be able to deliver the goods and the physician was he came to meet himself uh, because the wife insisted wife uh, was a chartered accountant who was referred by his office colleagues and uh, she was better for her complaints and he told very bluntly that look wife had functional complaints you give results i am not too convinced and he had a set of questions for me what are you going to do with homeopathy when are you going to stop uh, nsaids which are going to be there how well are the serological findings which are going to come up what is homeopathy going to do i had a lot of experience we had uh, symposiums where we had presented cases we had certain case reports which we had published in journals but his questions made me think that there is no research based uh, study which we had uh, written case reports are fine uh, they are valid we have seen that but the oxford uh, criteria of evidence based medicine again puts case reports in the lowest hierarchy of reporting findings of course they are in when it comes to academic publishing they are considered in the lowest strata for a practitioner it is fine but when i am looking at uh, the articles or in research original articles have their own roles research based articles are the most important and you have a skeptic who is questioning you and he was very valid to question an article in ijrh which is done answers a lot of these questions when what there are scales which are used quality of life in ra the disease activity score which is reduced with homeopathic medicines the reduction in nsaids which happens when homeopathy is started when the indicated simulum similimum is started you are able to do that serological findings reduced and homeopathic medicines are able to do that he was shared this he said i have done a lot of things and if one actually goes to a google scholar of pubmed one finds a lot of articles which uh, remove the claim that homeopathy is just a placebo therapy and it does not have any effect in joint disorders one can read there a lot of them there is not much uh, evidential based uh, papers which are existing this paper in ijrh was one of them the sun stepped into the store the experience and homeopathy both were able to deliver the goods the result was there and the sun became a little more anxious uh, and then probably the sun opened up that rather than being doubting the system he was more anxious that his mother should not be subjected to some kind of an experiment which he didn't want to do but then you know finally he also said is uh, he does now have which i also agree to both the things which he said is one should have more faith in homeopathy of course yes we should have faith in homeopathy and one should listen to wife i think all of us all husbands will agree that wife one should ought to be listening to wife uh, <laughs> i think so this is very important learning which is there but uh, on a given sense is this helps us to also build up a case wherein and now we see uh, thanks to our research department at mld mhi which they ask us to take better dissertations they compel us to do more good work we are now take our dissertations now are moving from case series to more based on scales wherein we are able to see a lot of scales being applied and more prospective and experimental studies are being done so this is now going to help and uh, not only the post graduate student but also us as teachers to learn from our students uh, work as well i this is a contrasting scenario rheumatology is one where i had a lot of experience cancer when i was confronted i had limited experiences i didn't have much of uh, cancer rhh is now starting a cancer opd so i know that the newer students will uh, be exposed to the speciality area as well and they will go on to develop their own experiences but i in my practice and also in my post graduate training i had limited experience in this i was not very sure as a practitioner of how much i can offer to cancer of course there is a lot written about homeopathy like how dr nilesh said there is a lot of rubrics which are there there is a lot of matra medica which talks of 
how much can i deliver i am not sure how much do i interpret those investigations i am not aware of it the newer investigations how does one actually make sense out of and another of this review article which is published in ijrh i think this article i had a certain case of cancer because one of our patients who was undergoing chemotherapy consulted us as a supportive while chemo was on and uh, what experience was that she they had a support group of a yoga uh, in our vicinity and in that yoga group they had a special sub group of cancer so uh, uh, along with being a yoga group it also functioned as a support group and uh, they were close knit all those people were cancer survivors or they were going through chemo cycles and uh, they were close uh, and they were sharing and helping each other and uh, this lady felt that uh, she was able to tolerate chemo much better compared to what she did when she had uh, not taken homeopathy so she was she recommended a lot so you the practitioner is suddenly uh, lands up with a lot of cases of cancer from that closed group coming to you and you are at sea of yeah, how much am i going to actually deliver in those cases the journal article and i think this journal is a re- essentially a review article which reviews published papers in peer reviewed journals from pubmed google scholar wiley uh, springer so i think every article which this authors team of authors has reviewed is essentially validated because it is into the top peer review sites uh, it is not case reports the author does mention that there are certain case reports which they have taken but only those which are in peer reviewed journals and not in other journals which are not peer reviewed the author goes on to talk of how homeopathy can help at the serological level at the tissue levels in uh, breast cancers in patients who are on chemotherapy on radiotherapy what are the homeopathic medicines which are there and this is a data which is compiled and pulled from multiple sources and put into a nutshell i think the six pages or the four five pages of this article gives you a refresher course on how a homeopath should actually look at cancer and not only does it do that it has got 48 references so i think uh, the article itself is uh, gives you a lot of data you want to read you have got 48 references on which they have built their premise you go on to read all of them there are citations which are available one cannot say i don't have experience you can learn from articles in a much better way and this allowed me in whatever limited experiences which i had of a clinical condition to apply and then use it in my practice and derive my learnings out of those practice as well placebo i think uh, we are seeing a lot of uh, placebo which is there and uh, homeopathy is always said that we are a placebo effect you go to twitter and we are rubbished uh, by the modern sciences and even by lay people of lately that homeopathy is just a placebo science and uh, british homeopathic journal now known as homeopathy is probably a impact factor journal in homeopathy and uh, this journal uh, the article of this where it talks of in vitro studies which are being done and these studies help to uh, disprove the fact that homeopathy is not just a placebo and there is it has a definite role which is there a potency when changed will have an impact so you will see a certain remedies in certain potency will have different changes which are there in vitro the detailed study has been done now zincum is something which uh, this presentation has made me uh, think into zincum i shared an experience of looking at uh, the plantar fasciitis and heel pains zincum is in vitro studies of zincum and in the forthcoming issue of jish we have zincum uh, a study from uh, jaipur wherein the author it's a research based study where they have used zincum in uh, studying various potencies of zincum and a placebo control of just water in agro homeopathy where uh, okra plant has been used and homeopathic uh, potencies of zincum have been applied there i wish uh, when the article uh, the issue will be coming out probably in the next month please do read it and you are able to remove the rubbish in the claim that it is just placebo because there is the human element is gone zincum and you see the size differs uh, the kind of product uh, the growth is much better when homeopathy is introduced in plants a lot of us have experiences think like bhavik was sharing a lot of his experiences of uh, sprinkling plants you know when he, uh, while we were traveling back uh, where there is a lot of uh, uh, you get these uh, insects which come on plants and uh, he shared uh, uh, his experience of using uh, staphylococcus aureus 
and uh, on uh, plants and you know the, they just die off uh, the the insects are not there so i mean uh, the experience one of our students had uh, studies which they had done where npk we use as a fertilizer and a homeopathic fertilizer is much better so you start learning from others experiences also and uh, you know some notes which i made i need to study zincum in a much better manner uh, in a more detail from peer reviewed journals again there are other articles which uh, of putting in the old wine our masters have done they have uh, written theories and gone but i think this article again in homeopathy talks of complex adaptive mix systems which the modern world talks of cas and how when similimum is introduced what changes does it bring in the body and it talks of what we have known into the in the modern terminology in the language which the world is now understanding and which we need to also imbibe in our own discussion and discourses and talk in the language which the world wants us to talk homeopathy was a science which is way ahead of its time we need to now put the old wine in a new bottle of course the new bottle is always better and uh, as we all know the old wine is always vintage and most expensive so it is uh, it donus lies on us surely to talk the language and i think uh, covid none of us can escape from it and uh, with the what is the role of homeopathy the pandemic has been raging we have seen uh, two waves obviously the third wave is imminent uh, most of us have prescribed in it i had the experience of prescribing in mild cases most of the times a little bit of moderate moderate to severe cases i was not sure of what homeopathy does how is the role of homeopathy in the questions and i think this is the time where homeopathy a lot of questions are being asked the scientific discourse has taken and uh, the, there is a lot of importance of proving what you are doing in a scientific manner we have been time and again told you have to do an rct what is the role of homeopathy what are the strategies when even if you are looking into a hospitalized case as an adjuvant therapy what is the change which homeopathy is going to bring and i think this paper not because it is published in jish but i think this paper is one such paper which will set the tone for all the subsequent papers to come because one it is conducted in a tertiary care modern medicine hospital number two is the findings are approved by ethical committee of not a homeopathic organization but of an modern medicine setup and the findings which were done have been validated by the statistician which is not done by a homeopathic department or the institution but by the uh, statistic department of a modern medicine hospital and it's an rct i think while writing the editorial for this issue uh, what i think uh, the article has referred to a lot of uh, studies which are already the work which has been done on covid a lot of good work has occurred and has been published in peer reviewed journals the article takes cognizance of all that and i went on to uh, write to see more if we are able to do and probably what i got a feel and i think it's a fact that this is probably one of the very few rcts which have been published uh, as of now in the public domain or in the knowledge world uh, there will be more i'm sure which will come up and this paper goes on to tell a homeopathic physician is when a homeopathy as a modality is introduced in uh, covid in severe my, uh, moderate to severe cases what will be the uh, days in which homeopathy will how many days the duration the oxygen uh, need what all changes one can observe what are the remedies which come up very often i think the role of intercurrent is this is the first paper which actually talks of the role of intercurrent none of the published papers uh, bring about that role also most of us have seen it so this becomes a starting point for many of us to be more confident in tackling covid and probably uh, in the newer waves we will be better prepared to deal with it uh, this entity which we have no running from okay conclude what do i learn from this reading journals is utmost important reading is also often used for examining one's own practice we may have done the best efforts but we may fail how does one look at those problems reads it learns from somebody's experience and applies it and goes on to update one's own body of knowledge for me uh, i see reading journals as a form of cme continued medical education because uh, it's the easiest way you know from the comforts of your own clinic from your own houses you are able to attend cmes read and apply you don't need to go anywhere i think a reading habit is something which one should inculcate 
and peer review process. I think I talked about the later part of the presentation, talked of all the articles which IGRH, JISH, or British Home uh, the Homeopathy Journal are all peer reviewed. They follow a stringent process. I think the COVID article went through, uh, the work was obviously the, the ethics committee of Dinanath Mangeshkar went through it. The article uh, was re revised. They went through an internal review. From there, it was uh, when it was submitted into the journal, Jish, we went, it went through a stringent peer review process wherein uh, peer reviewers gave their comments. And then the article, when it comes to the reader, it is by far uh, being uh, seen through so many people who have some standing in the uh, profession that the reader gets the best from everyone. I think that's what uh, the printed word has an impact power. And that is to deliver knowledge and to deliver in the best way and in the most scientific manner. So I think that is very, very important, which you learn from here. I think I will thank uh, sir, Bipin sir and Anup sir. I think these are three taskmasters who are uh, doing, uh, helping this plan sleepless nights because of our presentations. Uh, they work over time. And I think they also give you sleepless nights when they give, they come back with their own suggestions. And they want you also to make changes, as they say. Uh, I thank all three of them for helping uh, in this journey. Navneet, Dr. Navneet Vachani, I think Navneet, over a period of time for all of us in repertory department, Navneet is an alumni of repertory. And all of us in repertory, Navneet is what Mycroft to Sherlock or uh, Sidhu Jatta is to uh, Feluda. Navneet is our to-go man when we want data. And uh, all one needs to do is Navneet, maybe geographically located in one obscure corner of, uh, you know, one far corner of India in Junagadh. One needs to just send a mail to Navneet. Navneet will respond. How deep should I dig? And what is the timeline by which you want? And be rest assured that Navneet will dig across the world and get you the data. I think all the historical perspective, uh, which I have shared in this, is shared by Navneet. So thank you, Navneet, uh, for, and I think uh, all of us in the repertory department, he is our man to go. Kayur, I think Kayur uh, will get hiccups in the entire ICR month because the kind of way and the work which he has put in, the kind of professionalism which our work now reflects is because of this man's effort. He sleeps, he works overtime. I think uh, we are able to talk in the modern way and you know be presentable is because of Kayur. He takes, and you know what you see or the presentations which we are able to do is because uh, Kayur has taken a dry run. He takes dress rehearsals. He times your presentation. Uh, he says, this is not right. And the effort which he puts in, I think it's phenomenal. So thank you. And I think I thank all the editors, publishers of the journals, which I have shared, the authors whose uh, work, which I have cited here. And of course, many more, which I was not able to do. Thank you so much. I will leave you with, um, I don't read too much of Hindi poetry, but one uh, poet which I really like is Bhavani Prashad Mishra. And uh, I leave you with these lines, which something which I try to imbibe in every day. And uh, I think writing is difficult. We may, not everyone is blessed. So it's difficult for us to write, but reading is easy. And I think uh, we should read. And I think reading is not only confined to reading, uh, reading that is the physical book. Uh, today's world reading is much more visual. I think at ICR, what is the best part is, uh, you know, ICR and MLD MHI are updated with times. So if you want to read, the ICR gives you all the options. Reading, the GIST is there. All the journals are there for you to physically read. Online read those journals. You can do that. Reading is also visual reading. So we have uh, the segments of Fridays with Dhavle, or the FWD talks, which is known as. This is also essentially case reports. So somebody who can choose their medium. And there is another reading, which nowadays, at least it appeals to me, is podcasts. So you can read through years also. And I think it's the most easiest because while you're driving in between patients, while you're traveling, and also uh, even if you're preparing a cup of tea, all you need to do is just speakers and start reading. Kyur has already launched his first broadcast. Uh, MND MHI has released the first podcast. Kyur has a long list of the few ones to come. So only thing for left for us is now do is reading. So I wish all of you happy reading. Thank you. So uh, thank you, Nikunj. Uh, it was a wonderful journey of reading. We will request Nikun to, yeah, thank you. Sorry. And uh, I must confess, I am not a voracious reader. I just read need base, but uh, probably this will encourage me to read a little more. Uh, 
and the whole journey uh, of yours uh, is uh, so insightful and uh, i am happy that uh, jish has got a editor who has uh, who knows uh, all the facets of uh, writing and reading and uh, i think the jish will grow into a uh, into a one of the god after uh, journal with the quality control which you are keeping in your uh, hand and uh, you will be able to take jish to a newer heights with the quality scientific evidence based uh, publications and your journey and uh, insight into the clinicians uh, through reading has connected well all the facets of a clinician educationist and a researcher so i hope that uh, we will uh, hear from you frequently about these journeys so that it uh, encourage uh, most of us to read 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 and then write 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 and read because that is an another uh, thing which we have to do the writing uh, this ends our whole series of icr month and uh, it was really a wonderful journey uh with working with uh, all the presenters they took a lot of pain and lot of uh, you know uh, efforts to get what products we are having we 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 were just uh, an uh, support and helping hand but the real heroes were they who came forward and presented their experience uh, in a short time in a uh in a, in a uh, in a presentations which has to be concise which has to be focused and uh, all the experience have to be structured and uh, you know the shared in a limited time frame so it was a wonderful journey and it was uh, actually journey for my self learning also working with kumar sir and uh, kayur has given me lot of uh, insights about lot of things which one need to look into when you are reviewing when you are looking from a technical point of view and from the uh, homeopathic perspective uh this is uh, i would uh, request tiwari sir tiwari sir uh, to now give a concluding uh, comments on the whole uh, journey as well as today's presentation tiwari sir aap hain he is there tiwari sir i think he just got locked out i uh, just call call him and i one in the meanwhile uh, kumar sir any comment on the whole journey because you were the uh, task creator and i agree with it <laughs> no no that's a little uh... over stretching which nah, nilesh, I, which nilesh normally does so i nah, i knew i i i want to hear <laughs> something else than this <laughs> no i think um, uh, this opportunity both last year and this year which the unfortunate pandemic has imposed upon us and i think that it has brought out a uh, hidden potentials within a lot of people in the institute now for example in today's presentation i would really really not have imagined that nilesh and chirag would be able to make such excellent presentations of their material and i think all of us are sitting on heaps of material like this it is not that uh, nilesh and uh, chirag have to be singled out all of us are in there but not many of us take the trouble to look at what we are doing what we have done and they are prepared to consolidate i think that is a very very important thing unless your detail varied experiences unless they are consolidated they will not become a fund of knowledge and so therefore we have now taken this avenue that first talk about what you have done because talking sometimes is easier than writing and uh, once you have talked about it things get organized in your mind and then it is possible for you to start writing you know all of us are not like mld sir 
MLD sir used to write the entire gist of the chapter or the book in advance. One can never know how he used to do it. I always tell all our writers that look how the textbook has been written. The whole textbook, the entire initial portion of the textbook, the sections, the heading, the chapter, the subsections, everything was written clear cut in his mind and then he just goes on elaborating each section. That is not how we are trained, that is not how we have evolved. We have evolved the other way. We are more of an inductive presenters. So we look at our experience, we build our experience gradually, we start gaining greater and greater confidence in our ability to look at the broader picture and then we are able to reduce that broad picture into writing. Now writing has got its own uh, thing, I am asking Nikunj to start a workshop on how to write and I think that will be help a lot of our budding authors to take on the pen and start writing. But uh, I would feel that we must continue with these um, ep episodes on an ongoing basis and I am uh, glad, I do not know Bipin sir has not announced it, but at least once a month we would like to make it one Sunday a month, we would like to make these uh, presentations a regular feature so that uh, we are able to get an opportunity to work, to listen and to write. So thank you um, the all ICR alumni, MLD, MHI team for making this possible and to be able to ascend one step of the ladder towards building an evidence base. Tiwari sir is there, huh, sir? Yeah. So let Tiwari sir please conclude. I will request uh, Tiwari sir to kindly turn on his video. And also request him to unmute himself. Ha, sir. Aapka final conclusion of the whole series or Aajka presentations and we will conclude with your blessings. Oh, <laughs> I think this whole series, <clears throat> I share a day. Continued sharing, learning and evidence-based. What MLD sir has started from the beginning, learning by doing, learning by writing, learning by sharing and publishing. I think from the beginning till now, I'm very happy that our ICR present and past and future are having continuous touch with the learning. They are better learners. They have not forgotten what they have learned. They are teaching. They are doing cases. They are referring the source book. They are in touch with many journals, done with the faculty. And continuous education, which Sir used to say, I think our all students are in continuous learning whether they are from Sumeru, they are MLDHI or Bangalore. It is a very happy, happy moment for all of us. No doubt some are slow. Some are not with tune with the time. But whole ICR is with the time. In the, all the areas in education, clinical practice, research, community, community. Yes, of am going to go Hello? 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 Hello, I am audible? Yes, sir, you are audible. 
audible audible sir and i think in all the areas they are doing very well and our new faculty younger people like nikunj nilesh kirag bhavik many many more so we are not in dirt of any main power or money is already traveling kapsi sir always says money is available money is available people are also available so what sir has put the seat and i think dr kumar also had this shared his experience as father molas we should not only side inside in where we are and where we i will go after 5 years 10 years that also should be in the site i was supposed to write a report i have read i have made a point but i could not send it to him but uh, dr kumar dr bipin dr anu all they are very very engaged with the learners making best out of the learner and guiding learner to do what he likes what he loves and loves for him today i can see the training of icr power which brings learner to get out from their dullness weakness and continue work and work is the healing work is healing and i think this icr training should not end now i see a day it should continue i think once in a month once in three months continuous learning as long as we are uh, not able to meet together and my limitation is talking talking on on your online but you have given me the opportunity i am happy with all and this happiness is helping me to recover sooner or later i will perfect it all right and with the permission of my faculty i will like to come and continue my education i am not there to come to make other education my learning occurs because of sharing listening participating one to one so i will give thought my faculty will think over it and uh, i will report my help and i will say but my recovery will be most if i engage with all of you in person online you are giving me opportunity to talk that is good and i share a day will continue with the continued education i am very happy with the nikunj for the first time he shared his journey of learning and learning from everybody past general new general reading from the patient or sab ka reference usne diya bahut din ke baad aaj mujhe ko khushi hui ki nikunj जो दिखता वो नहीं है कुछ ग्रेट असेट नीरज किरा किरा सिंह क्या मैं जब बात नहीं करता हूं ना तो आई गोइंग टू सैडनेस एंड डिप्रेशन और जब मैं बात करता हूं तो लोग बहुत बिजी रहते हैं उनको फोन लेने का भी टाइम नहीं रहता है आई डोंट डिस्टर्ब आई ओनली फोन व्हेन आई थिंक इट इज नेसेसरी आईशियर डे एंड नहीं हुआ है आईशियर डे नया शुरू हुआ है 2021, 2025 एंड 2030, 30 तक जो हमको करना है उसके लिए सब कुछ अपने पास है और सर का आशीर्वाद अपने साथ में है उन्हीं के उन्हीं के आशीर्वाद से अपन सब काम कर रहे हैं और इन एडवर्ड सर के चांसेस ऑल्सो वी कैन वैसे मुंह है कोरोना ने तो लर्निंग बंद कर दिया था और कोरोना में बहुत कम हुआ है ये आज आज दिख रहा है और ये दिखता रहेगा विपिन सर कुमार सर से रिक्वेस्ट है कि ये जो लोग कितने हैं उसके पहले भी जिसने शेयर किया एक्सपीरियंस अपने पास बहुत फंड है लर्निंग का 
और अपना एशिया लिटरेचर है बहुत सी बुक आज भी बंद है उनको बंद नहीं रहने दें जितना भी अपने समझ में आता है पढ़ के शेयर करना जरूरी है वही अपनी वही अपनी वेल्थ है जो बोलते ना विद्या सर ने खाली ये बताया कि तुम क्या हो वट यू आर एंड वॉट यूर सपोज टू डू एंड वट इज पर्पज ऑफ यूर लाइफ और जिसको पर्पज समझ जाता है और आज की फैकल्टी को पर्पज क्लियर है और मूविंग अहेड जब दिन दूर नहीं है जब आई शेयर लर्निंग विल बी यूनिवर्सल नॉट इन द कॉलेज दिस और नेशनल जो एजुकेशन कमिटी बनी है उसके ऊपर भी कुमार ने बहुत कुछ लिखा है ये शेयर करना चाहिए भेजना चाहिए कि व्हाट वी हैव डन इन सीसीएच एंड व्हाट वी एक्सपेक्ट ने क्या बोलते हैं नेशनल फैकल्टी ने जो बनाया है उनके पास हमें से जाना चाहिए विच वी आर नॉट ट्राइंग टू डेज अवर सर वी आर ओनली पीपल बट आई सी आर एन एम एल डी एच सी आई इज द पीपल हुई यूनिवर्सल जो एविडेंस बेस्ड है वो कोई हवा में बात नहीं करते तो इट नहीं है सबका आशीर्वाद सर का आशीर्वाद अपने सर के साथ में है उनको जो याद किया कम से कम एक महीना सर ने तो एल ई डी का एक महीने का प्रोग्राम किया था और किया था तो गुरु शिष्य परंपरा चलती रहे कॉन्टेक्ट में रहे कभी कभी गलती से आप लोग भी फोन कर दिया करो क्योंकि आप सब समझते हैं मेरी लिमिटेशन थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर डूइंग दिस आईसीआर डायरेक्ट ग्राइंड ग्राइंड मैनर फोकस इज मेन लर्निंग कंटिन्यूट मेरी एजुकेशन और सबसे अच्छा जो नहीं कुछ नहीं बोला लर्निंग राइटिंग एंड पब्लिशिंग और पब्लिश करके कौन कहा पहुंच सकता है तुम्हारा नाम ले रहा हूं मैं खाली पर सभी लर्नर से मैं बहुत हैप्पी हूँ जिसे आपके बेंगलोर ग्रुप में लिखा है हाँ बेंगलोर ग्रुप ने मांगा है कि जो भी आपको चाहिए और सारी मैं मे बी आउट ऑफ सब्जेक्ट काली बाई क्रम का जो मैंने आपके पास भेजा है वो अपडेट आप आप सबके हेल्प से ही होगा बेंगलोर ने मांगा है कि भाई मैं आपका नोट भेज दो विल डू समथिंग रितेश पुरोहित ने भी बोला है और एसके पी ने बोला कि नोट भेजो तो अधूरे काम को पूरा करें मेरे पास खाली दो ही काम है ये बुकलेट पूरा करना और केस इन वोमेटिक प्रैक्टिस प्रॉब्लम डेफिनेशन प्रॉब्लम डेफिनेशन उसका एक केस है जो सर का एक केस है जो बहुत मेरे नजदीक है उसका पूरा मटेरियल मैंने वेलसरा मैडम को भेज दिया है और कुमार सर को भी बताया है और अभी विपिन सर और भाविक सर एकेडमिक ग्रुप के लोग हैं अनु सर भी कभी कभी बात करता रहता हूँ वो तो टाइम मैनेजमेंट में दो सेंटर में बात करता है और कभी कभी लंबी बात भी करता है मनोज मनोज तो अपनी बुक में बिजी है आई नो एवरीबडी इज बिजिंग इन एवरी लॉट ऑफ वर्क बट ये आपको ही आगे लेके जाना है मेरा मैं कोई नर्वस नहीं हूँ डिप्रेस नहीं हूँ पर लाइफ को रिस्पेक्ट करना होता है कम डाउन क्योंकि उतना उजाड़ा आते रहते हैं इतना वक्त है मेरे पास मुझे मालूम नहीं यंगर ग्रुप को देख के मुझे लगा कि जो मेरी गलत फहमिया थी कुछ हो नहीं रहा है कोई कर नहीं रहा है ऐसा नहीं है बहुत अच्छा कर रहे हैं और ये नाम सर के नाम से है सबका किसी का इंडिविजुअल कुछ भी नहीं है तो थैंक यू वेरी मच गिविंग मी अपॉर्चुनिटी टू एक्सप्रेस मी आउट
तो अपने सर पे सर का हाथ जब तक रहेगा जब तक अपन काम करते रहेंगे काम विद पर्पज काम विद गोल और कुमार सर ने जो भदन मुरलन में बोला है उन्हें तो एजुकेशन कैसा होना चाहिए सब ऐसा करुणा का लो मेंटल हेल्थ का लो बहुत कुछ अने मैंने पॉइंट लिखे हैं मगर मैं टाइप करके भेज नहीं सका आई एम सॉरी कुमार मगर आपने जर्नी अच्छी की है फोर्टी फाइव मिनट्स में आपने फोर्टी फाइव ईयर्स फिफ्टी ईयर्स का एक्सपीरियंस सबको दे दिया जो भी पढ़ेगा वो एजुकेशनिस्ट उसको जैन में आया गया होम्योपैथी क्या है होम्योपैथी बहुत एडवांस साइंस है ये एडवांस लोगों के लिए हो फिर जैन में आए नीलेष ने जो केसेस शेयर किए और चिराग ने जो पैथो फिजोलॉजी की बात किया मैंने ये बहुत आगे हैं अपने से इसी तरह से बड़ौदा ग्रुप बेंगलोर ग्रुप एम एल डी है और आईसीआर आईसीआर के जो पुराने बच्चे हैं उन्होंने एम नहीं किया होगा और जो आईसीआर ट्रेनिंग से गुजर गए फॉर एग्जांपल अपना पोरबंदर का आदमी उसने अपने 20 साल की प्रैक्टिस भेजी है खुश है वो आज मेरा अनुभव है कि उसको लोग समझते थे ये किसी काम का नहीं है उसने एज ए क्लिनिशियन इंडिविजुअल वहां के ग्रुप के साथ में अहमदाबाद का ग्रुप होगा कहीं का भी ग्रुप होगा छोटा ग्रुप होगा छोटे छोटे ग्रुप में सब अच्छा काम कर रहे हैं हर जगह कर रहे हैं खास करके तो गुजरात पूरा गुजरात में जो होम्योपैथी चल रही है और काम कर रहे हैं वेरी है और बेंगलोर बेंगलोर तो फंटास्टिक मगर उनको एक दिखना पड़ेगा इतना स्ट्रक्चर में नहीं जाए कि जमीन छूट जाए थैंक यू थैंक यू सॉरी टेकिंग यूर मोर टाइम मगर अच्छा हुआ इस तरह के सेमिनार करते रहो जब तक सम्पोजियम नहीं आता है और सिंपोजियम सेमिनार करते रहो और सर कर सिंपोजियम इस बार होम्योपैथिक दर्शन दर्शन होता था उसमें हम सब को एक दूसरे का दर्शन अलग है इंफॉर्मेशन नॉलेज अलग है तो होम्योपैथिक दर्शन का जो सब्जेक्ट सिंपोजियम का है वो आप हमेशा फॉलो करना वो करने के लिए भी लोग तैयार हैं अच्छे हैं मनोज है अनुप है प्रशांत प्रशांत तो एकदम गुल हो गया उसने तो बात करना ही बंद कर दिया है आई नो इज ए रिसर्च मैन इज गॉट लॉट ऑफ रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी ठीक है थैंक यू थैंक यू ऑल फॉर आई शेडरेल आगे के लिए गुड विशेष इसी तरह का एजुकेशन कंटिन्यू रहेगा ऐसे मेरा ट्रस्ट है थैंक यू थैंक यू सर फॉर ऑल द वर्ड्स ऑफ विजडम एंड प्रोबली आपके शब्दों से काफी लोगों को एनकरेजमेंट मिलेगा कि वी विल कंटिन्यू टू गेट कनेक्टेड एंड री एस्टेब्लिश एंड रीविजिट नॉट ओनली द कनेक्शन विद द इंस्टीट्यूट बट योर ओन सेल्फ एज वेल एज योर ओन क्लिनिकल लर्निंग एंड शेयर विद द वर्ल्ड द विजडम सो थैंक यू सर थैंक यू एवरी वन फॉर बींग एसोसिएटेड विद लास्ट होल मंथ uh it is a difficult to give continuous sunday uh, for four or five weeks i can understand with the uh, type of busy schedules we all have and the sunday is the only day when we have got some time to relax and reflect but in spite of that such a overwhelming response and uh, the connected with sir and this icr month it was a wonderful experience and uh, Uh, i agree that uh, we should continue this uh, process once in a month and uh, kumar sir has already announced and i would request all our uh, senior junior associated not associated people to come forward and uh, give the, their area of interest for presentations and uh, we will assure you that each and every one will get a platform as well as a quality assistance to present a quality uh, presentation here and together we learn 
so thank you all and uh, i would expect that uh, voluntarily people will come forward and show their intention to contribute for everyone's learning thank you thank you everyone thank you kayur for such a wonderful technical support we had hardly any technical glitch in the whole month and you were alert as i on toes and you have alerted all of us so we are fortunate to have a technical support in uh, you know the, as dr kayur with us and that the, he has played a major role in success of all our online endeavor so thank you all thank you kumar sir for being uh, consistently putting us online and thanks to everyone thank you all and uh, i hope that we will start the series from september uh, and uh, probably we will have first presentation from dr hitesh in september on uh, autoimmune thyroid hypothyroidism so this is a tentative announcement but uh, we will see the whole series thank 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 you all thanks